game has been a happy place for the New York Mets in 2006. But the last three days, well, it's been something a little different. Mets have struggled, and they try and get it right in the final game of their homestand as the New York Mets play the Chicago Cubs, also available in high definition. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Shea Stadium. Gary Cohen and Keith Hernandez with you today. The Mets have lost three straight games, and in each one, they've given up eight runs. They haven't done that since 2002. The pitching staff, which had been front and center, especially the front of the rotation, right now is struggling. Well, Pedro Martinez, of course, hasn't pitched in a while, hasn't won in over a month. And Tom Glavin, of course, hasn't won since June 23rd, and when he was 11-2. and two. Well, he's still got 11 wins now, and he's got five losses. It's been tough when your one-two starters don't cut it are, are not getting wins uh, that makes it tough on the back end and the back end has been a, a, trying to find the right people here we're in the middle of a six-man rotation Gary and John Mann gets the ball to today Mets have six pitchers in their rotation now Brian Bannister makes his first rehab start tonight so every start is an audition and certainly John Mayne's last start was a great audition well he's pitched he's pitched well this entire season when he's had the opportunity this will be a sixth appearance uh, four starts and one in relief and of course against Houston and he threw that nine inning complete game. It was a gem. He made a statement. He's got a chance now to make a bigger statement. Mets have had two rookies this year throw complete game shutouts. That hadn't happened since the days of Doc Gooden and our pal Ron Darling. Meanwhile, Mark Pryor goes for the Chicago Cubs. It's been another injury plagued year for Pryor. Well, you know, he was the golden boy along with Kerry Wood, and they just cannot stay healthy. Uh, he's 0 4, and he's, you know, hasn't had much hasn't had too many starts this season because of his shoulder so it'll be very curious to see where he's at right now how his stuff matches up to what his stuff used to be before before the injuries when the Mets have seen Pryor in the past he has absolutely dominated them so they'll see what Pryor has today as John Main takes him on Mets try to avoid getting swept at home for the first time this year when we come back we'll answer your questions in just a moment. My glove is a Franklin. I don't know the model because it's kind of they custom make it and they don't they don't put a model on. Just Carlos got a model, I guess. My favorite baseball movie is I don't know maybe The Natural. If I wasn't a baseball player, I'd probably be some computer geek. I was a terrible basketball player when I was growing up. I don't have a favorite pre-game meal. I eat anything and everything pretty much. My favorite. The uh, professional team was the Pittsburgh Pirates because they had cool uniforms. I spent my offices on in Puerto Rico. My hobbies are squid diving and uh, dominoes and love movies and love food. What Carlos didn't tell you is that back home in Puerto Rico, he's known as Little Carlos since his dad is 6'4", 340 pounds. That makes him Little Carlos. Well, if you stop by SNY.TV, you can ask the booth, and, well, we got questions for Keith. Dan from the Upper East Side wants to know, why is there a limit on where you can put pine tar on a bat? Well, I didn't, I, the limit was you couldn't go above the label of the bat, and that's because of the barrels where you hit the ball, a lot of guys were used to groove their bats, and, and a little bit of cheating and put some... Uh, uh, rosin in there and then flame it in you could hide it with the pine tar so I think that was that rule was instituted particularly for that and of course that uh, rule came to the forefront in 1983 when George Brett was ruled out on that famous play against the uh, Yankees at Yankee Stadium next question Josh from Melville New York Keith do batters still peek at the catcher's signs when they're at the plate? Well, Josh, um, I was a notorious peeker in certain situations. Um, I would hope so. I mean, it's hard for us to see. We don't have a close enough shot of the, of the, of the eyes of the hitter to find out. we got to cover the game. But I would think there's a couple players out there that might just sneak a peek. You ever have anybody throw at you because you peeked? The whole Philadelphia Philly pitching staff did. <laughs> I was always on my back. Let's go to the next question. Enrique from Elmhurst says, guys, why do they use the DH in the American League and not the National League? Well, that's easy. Well, because the National League's better. Well, <laughs> that's a very good question. And that was done higher ups in the commissioner's office. They made a decision to, to try the DH. I don't like it. I know Gary doesn't like it. Um, it's the powers to be that decided to do this. And I guess we're just going to have to live with it. It was added in an era when they were trying to add offense. It's not really necessary anymore, but it's uh, it's been grandfathered in, and they're stuck with the DH in that league. We're happy we don't have to watch it every day. We'll come back with the first pitch, Mets and Cubs from Shea, in just a moment.
New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by ChevyOffers.com, the presenting sponsor of Baseball Night in New York. By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. By Honda, see your Honda dealer and discover the great values now being offered. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit Geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Aflac, ask about it at work. Tons of buses because this is camp day at Shea. And uh, dozens of groups of campers are in the ballpark today. John Main faces the Rico Cubs lineup led by Aramis Ramirez seven home runs in his last six games including one in each of the first two games of this series. As John Main goes for his second win Juan Pierre leads off and takes the first pitch high. When you look at John Main right there his pitching better than his record. One on one to Pierre. He found out one thing about John. He's not afraid to throw his fastball. <laughs> He's got an off speed pitch, a curveball. And in his last start, threw first pitch strikes to 22 of the 31 batters. And you have to like that kind of aggressiveness. Mm, absolutely. So important to be ahead of hitters. Two on one to Pierre. And he fouls it back. Pierre has gone 59 consecutive plate appearances without a strikeout. That's the longest current streak. Chris, he's not usually around long enough to walk or strike out. He's a hacker. Todd Walker on deck. Pierre's been a hot hitter for the last month and a half for the Cubs. Three and two. A tough guy to walk. Threw a walk last night, just the 20th of the year for Pierre. And Main misses. So John Main, who came into the day having walked only seven batters in 26 innings, walks the first man to face him. Mets need someone to give them a good start right now. Well, they want to stop the bleeding here, and then that's a three-game losing streak. And okay, fine, but it's it's not alarm bells going off and dive, dive, dive. This, this, <laughs> this. You know, they've got a big lead. <laughs> All hands on deck. <laughs> Red alert. <laughs> Here's Todd Walker hitting at 281. And Pierre, the second leading base dealer in the league. He has 37, just three behind Reyes now. And what did he drop? Dropped something out of his pocket there. And as Castro goes out to talk to Maine. So Atlanta is 11 and a half out right now. They've won the last seven out of their 10, Gare. They're starting to play better. They, of course, they picked up Bob Wickman. From Cleveland to be their stopper, but still, I don't know if they have what it, it what it takes to make any kind of a sustained run. Pierre runs first pitch. Castro with the throw right on the money, and Pierre's out for me to you. Two six on the caught steal, and Castro made it look easy. Well, we've seen this all year. Ramon throws so well. He's such a fine backup. Another one of the unsung heroes of this ball club this year and we he's thrown out lots of runners this year and this is not even close. Just a perfect throw right on the corner of the back. You just can't do it any better than that. So Pierre is caught for the 11th time this year. Another notch in the belt for Castro and that's the first out of the game. And Walker misses the curveball and it's 0 2. And there's the first curveball from John. 75 miles an hour. Takes a lot off on the outside corner. Makes it a very effective pitch. And that's interesting because in his start against Houston, he didn't throw that curveball early in the game. And that is right to the glove, as you saw there in that replay. Right where Castro wanted it. I wonder what's going on here. Well, Castro was out to the mound before, and now Delgado taking a trip and grabbing at the rosin bag. It's a sweaty kind of a day. Yes, it is. It's doubly sweaty up here. And we're just sitting and yapping. And we have fans on us, too. <laughs> See a two curveball and it misses one ball, two strikes. Walker hitting at 281. He has struggled defensively, and so he's been playing a little less lately. One of those players who is rumored to be on the move before the trading deadline. Two and two, the. Uh, Brewers picked up Tony Graffinino from Kansas City yesterday. Same kind of 
middle infielder that you know, Walker is, but we'll see whether there's a market for his services. And Maine for the second straight hitter goes to a full count. Well, Maine right now is missing up and away the left hand hitters, the two he's faced. And look how it's as deep as Walker can get in that box. On three and two, he lifts one down the left field line foul. I'm just wondering if they've shortened the batter's box as far as the length, not the width. Because he is deep in the box, and look where his front foot is, in front of home plate almost. So I think they've shortened the box. And he's not spread that wide. Fouls it off again. Which is, why would they do that? Uh, why would they change that rule? What, what's going on on I, Park Avenue in the I, commissioner's office? I think we would have known about that if they... I just don't understand course, it that. Could have been just you know the grounds crew day uh, game after a night game. Let's just see that side angle again if we get a sh chance is to see how spread out he is with his feet. Three in a row he's fouled off. He might be one of those guys that so many hitters today that are so their their feet are so far apart. They teach that today. Um, I always had my feet about shoulder shoulder uh, shoulder width. As far as the, he's he's really spread out. It's this one to center, and Beltron has plenty of room. Two away. So two out and nobody on in front of Aramis Ramirez. Well, the Met Geico defense, Nady back in right field today. Castro gets the start behind the plate, rests the Laduca, and Andy Chavez hit the three run bomb last night. From right field to left field, Cliff Floyd gets a rest today. Got to keep that hot bat of Chavez on the lineup. Nobody's hotter than Aramis Ramirez right now. And he lines the first one at a right, and that falls for a base hit. Well, you notice no first ball fastball this game. And Ramirez went after the first pitch fastball, and Glavin last night hit a home run. That was a breaking ball, slider away, and he offered right it the here. first pitch and just 11, got a lucky little dork out there in right. So Ramirez now with a seven game hitting streak two out single. They're all falling in for him right now. He's got every reason to smile and here's Jacques Jones hitting cleanup today. One of the fourth time this year Jones is at cleanup. Dusty Baker's been maneuvering his batting order in the absence of Derek Lee. And it's ball one to Jones. We had a home run in the first game of this series. It's a pretty good year for the Cubs. 289, 16 homers, 49 RBI. Coming over from Minnesota. And change up in at the knees. Nice 80, 82 mile an hour sinking change right to the glove. So May mixing it up early against the Cubs. A little different than the way he went after the Astros early in his start Friday night. Fastball in for a strike, one and two. Well, the Cubs obviously miss Derek Lee in this order, and it just forces Dusty Baker to just try to find the right combination. He scored eight runs in two days. He's doing something right. Right now they are. Back to Maine. And he's done with the first inning. Helped out by Ramon Castro's right arm. Maine throws up a zero in the first. That's come up against Pryor in the bottom. Mark Pryor makes just his sixth start of the year for the Chicago Cubs, looking for his first win. The shortstop, number seven, Jose and here's the Chevy Mets lineup he'll face. Andy Chavez off his three-run homer last night. Gets another start. Cliff Floyd getting the day off. Ramon Castro in there for Paul LaDuca. He's already made his presence felt. As the Mets look to snap a three-game losing streak. Hadn't been the offense's fault. You look at Mark Pryor right there with that bulging 8.14. That is just the shoulder problems he's had. His best year was 18 and 6 in uh, 2003. Was 18 and 6. Always been a strikeout pitcher. 11 and 7 last year. An injury kind of marred season. Also, it's just been one arm problem after another for him. Arms and legs and everything in between. Here's Jose Reyes leading off, and he takes a strike. Reyes. Still trying to get back in a groove coming back from the finger injury. Six for 35 since his return. And then you see Pryor. Virtually every season he has had some physical woes. 
And you see that seven seven times on the disabled list in his young career. And it's been all over the map. Hamstring, shoulder, Achilles, elbow, shoulder, and lately an oblique muscle, which kept him out for two weeks. One and two to Reyes. Breyer was the number two overall draft pick out of USC in 2001. He had been drafted out of high school number one by the Yankees and didn't sign, went to college instead, went to Vanderbilt at first, and then transferred to USC. Mabry finds Pryor and Reyes retired one away. So one out and nobody on. It'll bring up Andy Chavez. Chavez gave one a jolt last night. Our Coors Light cold blast. Three run bomb in the second inning, his second of the year. Off a pretty good pitcher there in Carlos Zambrano. And that's the cold blast, their core is cold blast, and he has done such a terrific job this year. Can't say enough about Endy. And there's the winning pitcher yesterday. Boy, he's got a chance to be Cy Young. He keeps it going right there on the left, Victor. I'm sorry, not Victor, <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> there's a Freudian slip. Here's Endy Chavez, and he bluffs the bunt. 1-0. Oh. That's, oh. That's he's bragging about his off field home run yesterday. He's sitting there talking with Nephi Perez, the veteran. Four home runs for Carlos Zambrano. Most by a Cubs since Fergie Jenkins 35 years ago. Well, Ronnie and I, after the game, we went into the city and met Gary Matthews, the first base coach for the Cubs, and over at Smith and Walensky's at the grill and had a couple. Bottles of wine between the four of us and my wife included. Did you, did you forget it was a day game today? No, I remembered. <laughs> I was always able to get up out of bed and put the boots on and go get them. <laughs> I couldn't do it today. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Sarge was saying that Zambrano is just amazing, that he's a great soccer player, he's an athlete, and there's Sarge right there. And he's like, uh, uh, Zambrano's a great soccer player. He goes, he'd never seen a pitcher switch hit. He goes, he hits the same from both sides of the plate. 2 0 to Chavez. And Pryor throws a strike. Sarge told me that Zambrano said, Glavin's going to leave me off with a fastball away. I'm going to take him deep to right field. And first pitch, boom, he did. Wow. How about that? And he says he's a much better left hand hitter than right. But he's hit three home runs right handed this year. Pryor behind three and one. Mark Pryor on the 10th of September last year, as you look at Beltron on deck, had a career record of 41 and 21. In eight starts since, he's 0 and 6. And he walks Chavez. And the Mets have a base runner with one out. On the Cub Ford defense, you got John Mabry, the ex-Cardinal, at first base today. Todd Walker at second. Sedan Ramirez round out the other side. Michael Barrett back in the lineup behind the plate. Angel Pagan gets the start in left field. And Pierre and Jones out there in the other two-thirds of the outfield. Well, here's Beltran, who had a long home run last night. His 28th of the year. Carlos having a terrific season. And he takes ball one from Pryor. Still struggling at home. He hit a bomb last night. I went over the bullpen fence. And that is a long way, the Met bullpen. So those numbers on Pryor since last September. It's incredible because Pryor's a guy who came to the big leagues ready to win. And everything has short circuited him since. He's still 41 and 27 in the big leagues, but he's only 25 years old. And he's just had physical problem after physical problem. And this was a guy they said had perfect mechanics. He'd never get hurt. And all he's done is get hurt. Well, you never know, right? And mm -hmm. that has been the that's what's been holding him back, not his stuff, his his health. On two and oh, Beltron takes a breaking ball for a strike. You know, they they looked at Kerry Wood and they said, well, he's got such a violent delivery, throws across his body, he's gonna get hurt. And he has. But prior they said just the opposite. And they haven't kept him healthy either. And every franchise has problems with pitchers getting hurt as he falls behind three and one. The Mets certainly know that from the, you know, the days of Paul Wilson and Bill Pulsifer. 
but when you have your two marquee pitchers suffer through injury after injury year after year it just it puts a huge crimp in your ability to build anything. Three and one to Beltron Chavez runs and Carlos fouls it off. Well they've tried to reinvent the game and it's it can't be done. The game is perfect. It's still the same old same old pitching is the name of the game. You get injuries in your pitching staff particularly today with the with the four extra teams when they expanded in the 90s. There's just not enough depth to go around. Which makes frontline pitching even that much more valuable. Absolutely. That's why they get that's why 500 pitchers get paid four million dollars five million dollars. Chavez was running three and one so you figure he'll run three and two. Prior takes a look at him. Well, Pryor and Wood, your quintessential power pitchers at the front of that Cubs rotation. And even without them pitching much, it's been a power pitching rotation. Chavez runs, Beltron pops it up. Playable for Barrett or Ramirez. And Ramirez has it two away. Well, that's the proper way right there. Use your mouth, your voice, scream and shout, I got it. And you hear Ramirez call off the catcher to the, any ball up the line on either side, whether first or third base. I know for all you kids out there, if the third baseman or first baseman can make the, the catch on the pop up, it's easier for that. That pop up's easier for the third and first baseman than it is for the catcher. Camp groups all over Shea Stadium. Got your little lumps of color blue shirts and green shirts and gold shirts. It was a fun day at Shea with so many kids on hand. Here's Delgado and he takes a strike. Let's do this twice a summer with these early 12 10 starts to accommodate the camp groups. So they can come out and see a ball game and still get back in time for the end of the day. When we were kids, we'd come to the game with camp group that have a two o'clock start. We'd stay for five innings and we'd have to leave. One one to Delgado. Did it make you leave? Of course. The mid you got to get back by four o'clock. Ah. You must, you must have gone crazy. I hate it. But you had to learn to live with it. I did it very rarely. <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted to hide. <laughs> Speed to Delgado, one and two. I never went to camp in California. I went to one camp. I went to the San Francisco Warriors back in the day as a Rick Barry and Jeff Mullen. And they were Nate taking... Thurman. They had a camp up in Squaw Valley and Lake Tahoe, a, a one week camp for basketball. I went up there. My brother and I had a ball. They weren't taking you to baseball games. No, we were playing hoop then. That was so much fun. The players were great. I can just see you posting up. Oh, I was point guard. I was drive. Really? Oh, I was a point guard. There goes Chavez, and Delgado strikes out, and that ends the inning. So prior coming up and into Delgado has his first strikeout. We go to the second with no score. Be part of the celebration at Shea with Met season tickets. Pro-rated packages include postseason ticket purchase options and priority access for season tickets in the new Mets ballpark. To get your season tickets for the rest of 2006, call 718-507-TIXX or go to Mets.com today. Warm afternoon at Shea. Good crowd on hand as John Main throws ball one to Michael Barrett. Barrett in his eighth season is having his best offensive year by far hitting a 335. Right to the shortstop Reyes. And one away. Well I guess we're going to have to say the ground ball hit to the sure handed Jose Reyes. He makes all the routine the plays. Person, number 17 John Mabry. Here's John Mabry. Appearing for the first time in this series. 35 year old veteran. Hasn't had a whole lot of playing time this year just his 18th start and that's even with Derek Lee being out for the bulk of the season. 
They've I, gone with other options at first base. I gave John a little needle on the opening game of the series. I said, boy, you look different in that Cub uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no. He's a Cardinal most of his career and came up as a Cardinal. And of course, that tremendous rivalry between the Cubs and the Cardinals. He's had a couple of tours of duty in St. Louis. A lot more playing time under Tony La Russa than he's gotten under Dusty Baker. There's Angel Pagan on deck. Such a terrific rivalry, the Cardinals and Cubs. I've, it's just upstate. You know, you go just drive up to northern Illinois to, to Chicago, and the Cub fans would come down to St. Louis. And no matter if both teams were in fifth place, they'd fill up the place. Just think, fill it up. That's an excellent point. As Mabry takes a strike three and two. You know, people in the Northeast think of the Yankee Red Sox rivalry as the be all end all. And that's a borderline strike. But in years where the Yankees and Red Sox haven't both been good, as Mabry goes down swinging two away, so that, that rivalry lay dormant for a while. It did. Um, and there's the fastball up in the strike zone away, swinging right through it. The Cubs and Cardinals, it doesn't matter where they are in the standings. And it's all the same way with the Giants and the Dodgers. The same thing. I grew up with a kid with that rivalry in San Francisco. Uh, what I remember from the Cub. Cardinal series, particularly at Bush Stadium, was just all the maniacs and the fist fights. I mean, I just was terrible. There was brawls in the stands where the police had to come and cart them out by the by the dozens. I'm not I'm not exaggerating. As the game progressed, that distract you at all? Oh no, but you know, in between pitches, you see some guys throwing some haymakers up there. Angel Pagan, the former Met farmhand, takes a strike. Gary Cedarson's got a pretty wide zone today. Well, think about the giant Dodger robbery, at least the California incarnation of it, as it's hit to second base, is that the giant fans care a whole lot more than the Dodger fans do. One, two, three inning for John Main. He's thrown up 12 consecutive scoreless innings. Broadway Boxing gets back in the ring with Sportsnet New York as Brooklyn contenders Dimitri, the star of David Salida, and Curtis Showtime Stevens headline these Big Apple bouts. Broadway Boxing Sunday at 8, only on Sportsnet New York. Well, this was when Castro came in off after the inning was over. Rick Peterson instantly got him over, and they're chatting here. You saw Rick with the uh, motioning with the like the, towards his chest. With his hand open. In other words, maybe the fastball inside. He needs to do this. Rick is ever diligent and observant in that dugout. He watches his pitchers as he should, very closely. That takes his notes during a ball game. One and one to David Wright. It's important for the pitching coach not only to have rapport with his pitchers, his 12 pitchers, but also the two catchers. And that emphatic point that Rick was making came after a one two three inning two and one so not only giving guidance after something goes wrong but even after something goes right. Well he had that long conversation with Laduca after that tough inning that Glavin had and that four run third off of Glavin last night. Had a lengthy conversation with Laduca, and I think it was more or less finding out: Is he throwing hard? Does he have his heart sink? You know, what is what's going on here? There's Bob Brenly. He is the TV voice of the Cubbies. Former catcher, former World Series winning manager. Three and two to David Wright. David hitting a 316. He's been hitting for a whole lot of power lately, but he has a hit in six straight games. And the curveball misses, and it's a leadoff walk to right, the second given up by Pryor. Pryor, when he's going right, has magnificent control. The year he won 18 games, he walked only 50 batters and struck out 245. Absolutely, and this year 13 walks and 24 in the third coming into the game now he's walked two so basically 15 walks and 25 and a third that's way too many and he you know the Mets have faced him before he's made four career starts against the Mets 2 and 0 with a 1.23 ERA the kind of guy would just blow you away freeze you with a curveball and 
This doesn't look like that kind of pitcher right now. No, he does not have the velocity. And, you know, they call them the core exercises, uh, your stomach, your back. I think they do too much of it today, but there is no necessity to have those muscles strong. But when you pull a, an oblique, there's a lot of stretching going on, a lot of trunk twisting to pitching and hitting, and, boy, it's, it can hamper you. Here's Jose Valentin, three for six in this series. And he takes a strike. That's where Pryor's topping out, right about 92 miles an hour. The thing about Pryor is that he's always been very much about his legs and his leg drive, his incredible calves. But he's also had problems with those legs. Changeup misses one and one. He's had Achilles problems, he's had hamstring problems. There has been a graveyard of major league ball players over the the centuries, I guess we can say now, plural, that have had their injuries and prevented them to reach the, the, the stardom that they were destined for. There have been a million of them. Their health is so critical. That's not to say that Pryor, Pryor can't still have a great career. Oh, I understand. Career. Right, right. He's only 25. Where would a healthy Mark Pryor be right now record-wise? Strikeouts wise career if he, he was healthy his first three years. Well, only once in his career as he made as many as 30 starts and this year only five. He was on the disabled list till the 18th of June this year with a shoulder injury. Valentin takes high and then made four starts and went right back on the DL. He hurt himself swinging the bat. Suffered that oblique pull. And there's the quick motion of hardly any leg kick. It's pretty much a straight up pitcher. Look at those calves. When he was in the minor leagues, his teammates called them Cavzilla. <laughs> <laughs> there goes right, and the hit and run hit to right center field. Jock Jones back, has room, and right will retreat to first, one away. Well, the Mets used the hit and run effectively with Valentin last night, tried it again, but Jose flies out. Well, the advanced scouts, and I know Dennis Menke is here in the stand. He's been here this whole series. He is the advanced scout for the for the Braves. And he's going to be telling Bobby Cox that Willie Randolph has been playing a little more aggressively and particularly hitting and running with Jose Valentin. That'll be in the scouting report. That's the advantage of the positives of having your advanced scouts. And there's a handful of them. Right runs, Barrett's throw, got him. David gunned down trying to steal out for the fifth time this fourth time this year he's had 11 steals. Well a good pitch to throw on no wasted motion perfect throw dead as a oh close. Let's see the jump. He got a decent jump. Did he get in. It's close I think he had him good throw if that throws any higher he's safe. Walker with the tag. Loop to shallow left center and a no man's land and a nice running play by Pagan to end the inning. Pagan put on a burst of speed to pick off that blue pit by Nady and the Mets are done in the bottom of the second. Well, the Mets have been looking for a starting pitcher. There was a pretty good one. David Cohn. George, 20 game winner, <laughs> multiple World Series champion, and he joins us in the booth. David, how are you? Doing good, Gary. It's great to see you. Thank you. You ready to pitch? I wish. Well, my timing's <laughs> off. This would be a fun team. First pitch foul back our way by Ronnie Cedeno. So, are you officially retired uh, from baseball and broadcasting? What are you doing these days? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, changing diapers at home. I've got a four month old baby, baby Brian at home, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm Mr. Mom right now. Um, waking you up in the middle of the night, crying, hungry? I, I let him cry. <laughs> <laughs> Tough love. That's right. <laughs> right. Bravo. Ferberizing it. There you go. We've, we've been through it. <laughs> I understand you picked up golf? I'm trying. It's tough, isn't it? It is a very difficult game. I have a whole new respect for golf right now. Trying to learn how to play that game is uh, extremely difficult, but it's a great competitive outlet after you get out of the game of baseball. It's like you're staying in shape, that's for sure. I'm, I'm chasing around the house, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm staying active and, do, and doing what I can. I still follow the Mets, and uh, you know, and it's been exciting to watch them play this year. Uh, what a great young team. 
Sedania to short. And Reyes throws him out one away. So we got we got you in 87, right? 87, Ed Hearn. Yes. That's right. That's Steele, the century, one of them. And um, I remember your first start. Remember you got rocked? I do remember, remember that. And when David gets rocked, he gets his face gets beat red. He had that look on his face. I remember telling him after the game. <laughs> he got hit so hard that game. And you came out, and the next game, and you were on your way. Yeah, it was. that was a tough one. I think I set a Mets record. I think I'm, I'm still in the record books. We're giving up 10 runs and, and one start. I think there's only one other guy that's topped that over the, over the history of the Mets. Mark Pryor takes ball one. Everybody forgets that in 88, you didn't start in the rotation. You had your great year. Was it 20 and 4? 20 and 3 that year. Yeah, I started out in the bullpen. You shorted him one. Okay. 20 and 3, <laughs> and he didn't start the month of April. And I think David would have been the Cy Young. If he had started the season, you know, starting, he got his 36 starts. That was just one of the greatest years I ever saw, right there with, with Doc's great year in, in 85. Just super year. It was, it was a great team to play on. I know Rick Aguilera was a starter, and he ended up hurting his elbow that year. Pryor drops down a nice looking bunt right with the bare hand play, and he's got him. Nicely done by Wright. Two out. Well, a good button right here, and David has to come a long way, and looks like the umpire was going to call him safe and changed his mind. That's first base umpire Jim Reynolds. Picked out nicely by Delgado at first base. Just a little bit too hard. Nice play by David. So two away. One David makes the play as we talk with another David, David Cohn. You have to leave the Mets to, to get your World Series rings. What was the highlight for you? I mean, you, you had so many great moments in your career, big games, World Series championships. What was the apex for you? Well, there were so many. Um, one of the first ones I got was winning 20 games with the Mets in, in 1988 and walking off the mound, and President Nixon was in the dugout. And I didn't see him until I almost got eye to eye with him. And uh, that, that was a real thrill uh, you know, to, to meet a former president after you win your 20th game. Uh, anytime, as, as Mex knows, anytime, anytime you, uh, anytime you win a World Series, the first one with the Yankees in '96 was a big one. Uh, There's a lot of human interest stories on the side. Uh, Joe Torrey's brother had a heart transplant that year, so there, there was a, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of special stories on the side that had nothing to do with baseball that made that made that team kind of kind of special. And then, of course, on a personal note, throwing the perfect game in '98, you know, on Yogi Berra Day at Yankee Stadium was a big one as well. The, how where does uh, the big you came in to get Mike Piazza in that one series and then in the that was the 2000 series. 2000 I, should, I should know that yep. 2000 the subway series. I had an awful year with the Yankees that kind of fell on my face and had some injuries at the end and I probably shouldn't have even been on the playoff roster. But Joe Torrey put me on that roster and he took Denny Nagel out of that game in four and two thirds with nobody on and right. brought me in to face Piazza and then Denny Nagel wasn't too happy about that obviously but. Uh, I was happy just to get one out in that series after having played for both both sides of town, the Mets and the Yankees. Uh, had I not pitched in that series, it would have been pretty disappointing. You popped him up, am I correct? Popped him up, yeah, second base. There was nobody on, two outs in the, in the fifth inning, and I got him to pop up. And then you were able to come back to the Mets and get that one more win. It was a great day for you. Popped up to right, and that retires the side. So one, two, three inning for John Main. David, will you hang out with us for another half inning? Sure. All right. We go to the bottom of the third at Shea. Still no score. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Ramon Castro will lead off against Mark Pryor in a scoreless game. Seems though Barrett and Pryor have been deep in conversation ever since this game began. We're joined by David Cohn, who knows all about those conversations. Do you ever listen when the catcher talks to you? Occasionally. A lot of times, you you know, sometimes you get that deer in the headlights look out there that, that Keith knows he's seen on me many times, and uh, you, you, just, you can just talk right through me, and I wouldn't hear a word. Well, David was a lot like Doc, where if he got in trouble, he can go number one and get a strikeout if he had to upstairs. And... I, I forget what game he pitched here and the bases were loaded and he needed a strikeout and I don't know if it was on the road. I, I just remember three straight fastballs up and in to a left hand hitter 
go sit down, grab some pine. And that got that was a big second out in the inning, and then he got the third out, and it was a late in the game, and that's what how David pitched. David, I always loved to play behind David because he was never afraid to throw number one. Plus, he had that electric hook to go with it. Good one to Castro. And you also knew how to work a lineup. You you would work around guys. You'd put yourself in a bases loaded situation and find your way out of it. Right. Yeah. Especially the National League style. You know the DH. Having played in both leagues, I really notice the different strategies in the National League and how you can, the big three hitters in the middle of the lineup, you really concern yourselves with. Two and two to Castro. But the pitcher really makes that big of a difference, you know, and I, based on my experience, you really pitch differently if you're a National League pitcher than you would with the DH in the American League. Do you think that accounts at all for the way the leagues are seemingly unbalanced right now? I really do. I think um, the American League lineups from the mid 90s and on really got deeper. The seven, eight, nine hitters in the American League all were 21, 20 home run guys. Uh, the designated hitters really became a, a high paying job, uh, a superstar type position. You know, in the National League, you pitch through, you, you worry about the big three in the middle, and then you pitch around the bottom of the lineup. Hit hard, just foul. But well, you must have missed hitting in the American League. George can hit. I know. He didn't look pretty, but he can get, he can find a hole. Lefty stick. Yeah, I, I prided myself on being a tough out. Actually, our, our, the Mets staff back then was probably the best hitting staff for pitchers in the league. You know, Ron Darling could hit, Doc could hit, uh, Sid Fernandez could hit a little bit. Rick Aguilera was one of the best hitters I've ever seen. Yes. So we had some talent on the pitching staff. Slider misses. Well, Bobby O was the only one that, that, that held the bottom down. He, Bobby couldn't hit. Now, now wait, here's the thing I didn't understand when when Doc got to the Mets Davey wouldn't let him bat left handed. How come how come he let you bat left handed. I was a nobody when I first came to the Mets. So <laughs> I think Davey thought I was going to be the next Ed Lynch and be a middle reliever. Lead off walk to Castro second straight inning Friars walk the lead off. Hitter. In fact you're in the record books you were the first Met pitcher ever to get a pinch hit. That's correct. In, in Montreal. In, in Montreal, we, we had run out of players, and I was, uh, I pinch hit for John Franco. It was, I think, in his first or second year as a Met at that point. You had and a better stick than John. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, <laughs> you know, I, I got thrown in there and hit a little blooper up the middle. John Main up to bunt. And he takes a strike. How, what do you miss most about being in the game right now, if anything? Well, you know, I miss being good at it. People say, ask me if I miss the game. I, you know, I miss these days when I was with the Mets, when I could throw the ball 95 miles an hour, when I really had an arm and I, you know, I could have some fun with it. You know, I... Main gets the bunt down. Mabry going to second, gets the force relay, not in time. Good aggressive play by Mabry to retire Castro. Well, Mabry comes in, bare hands it. Wow. And that's tougher play for a right hander than a left hander because he has to do more pivot, makes a more of a pivot where a left hander has the natural throw to second base. But the Cubs have turned two nice double plays two days in a row here on Buns. Zambrano made play yesterday. Of course, there you had Castro running, so Mabry had good awareness. One out and one on, and here's Reyes. Do you ever want to get back in the game as a coach or? A in the booth or are you just happy playing golf and changing diapers. Uh, I think eventually I would like to get back into the game. You know uh, it's, it's been nice to take some time away and try to start a family and uh, you know get some personal things in order and I've got a couple personal businesses going on too but uh, the game gets in your blood and never you know you, you can't get it out. Uh, no matter how many years you stay away I'll, I'll always uh, remember my years with the Mets and the Yankees and I'm lucky to have spent 12 years of my career in New York. And, uh, you know, eventually I'll find my way back in the game somehow, some way. You're good at this broadcasting thing too. Yes. David always was very articulate and very a step ahead of everybody. There's always a place for you here, you know. You think? I don't know. You guys are doing pretty good. I, I've been watching Ron Darling. He, he's, he seems like uh, I, I don't. I don't think he's a rookie. But, but you can never have enough pitching. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Reyes looks one foul, and it's two and two. Well, they are, these are my two mentors, you know, Keith and Ron Darling were the two guys when I was a rookie with the Mets. They kind of uh, showed me, showed me New York, and, and uh, I eventually got an apartment in Manhattan, which wasn't in vogue back then. And I kind of followed in Keith and, and Ronnie's footsteps and learned how to love New York and New York City, and 
You know, that's a big deal. I think when you're playing in New York, you got to really thrive here and you got to really want to be here. And you got to enjoy the city and everything that goes with New York, including the media and including all the toughness. Reyes toward the bag at second. Walker gets the force. Relay not in time. Well, flare by Reyes, and he's aboard with two out. Well, Reyes gets jammed for the second time. He's been struggling now since he had that tore cut, uh, cut on his finger on that head first slide to first base where he injured it, and he's been struggling. See if he tries to steal a bag here with two out, and Chavez coming up. Of course, you took Keith's number after he left. I did in honor in honor of Keith. I did. Uh, you know, I wanted to get out of the 44. I always thought 44 was a hitter's number, and uh, so so I stole Keith's number for a year. And you know, that was kind of a thing that we started to do a little bit of. Uh, you know, you take somebody's number that wasn't retired and maybe should be retired. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and and you know you you wore I wore 22 when I was in Kansas City in honor of a great Royals pitcher named Dennis Leonard. Yes. He's one of the great Royals pitchers. So, you know, I think that was kind of the, the thing you do back then. That meant a lot to me when I read that in the paper because I was up in Cleveland up there dying on the vine, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Mistaking by the lake. It's a good number. It's a, oh, it's a great number. Seven's always luck. Good luck. Chavez walked his first time up. Priors walked three. Reyes with 40 steals leading the league and he takes off. Throw by Barrett, not in time. Number 41 for Jose Reyes. Well, he got the National League lead. It's a good throw by Barrett, right on the money, but Reyes just too good a jump, too fast. Stole that one easily. And here's the jump, and he just gets such great acceleration. You know, all the great base dealers have that. Ricky Henderson, Lou Brock, Maury Wills. So the Mets have a runner in scoring position for the first time. Chavez has been money with runners in scoring position, hitting 364. Not exactly what you expect from Andy Chavez, but he has just been spectacular. It's been a great pickup, that is for sure. And his defense is sparkling. Three and one to Chavez. So, what are your impressions of this Mets team, David? Well, my, my impressions are they, they have a very good blend. It's it's well thought out. I think Omar Minaya and Willie Randolph have done a great job in, in blending this team together in terms of youth with veterans. Uh, obviously, everybody always talks about pitching. Do you have enough or not? But I've been impressed with some of the young arms too, including Pelfrey and the kid pitching today, Maine. I'd like to see more Bannister too if he comes back from from his uh, his DL stint. Uh, I think that's the key. You've got to develop young, good pitchers from your minor league system, and then you can add a free agent here and there. But marquee pitchers are tough to find. Uh, you know, people talk about Dontrell Willis or Barry Zito, and sure that'd be nice to pull that off, but there's no guarantee you're going to pull that off. Those are tough trades to make. Three and two to Chavez, and he lifts one foul. Were you ever on pitch count with Davey? Or any manager you played with? No, I was not. And I think uh, that was one of the strengths of Davey. He, he expected us to go nine. And whether it was 120 or 130 pitches, you know, I don't see a big difference between 105 or 125 pitches, especially if you're loose, if you're in a good groove. Sometimes the last 30 or 40 pitches you throw are easier on your arm than the first 30 or 40 pitches you throw until you get the rough edges worn off. Uh, there's lots of times my 120th pitch of the game was some of some of my best pitches of the game. You know, I was I was in a groove. I was loose. Uh, you know, I was never a big believer in pitch counts. And Chavez goes down swinging at a high fastball. Second strikeout for Pryor and David. Thanks. It was Gary, great talking with you. It's a pleasure. It's great to Keep see you, Dave. Always. always. Good luck with fatherhood. Thanks. We'll see you back here soon. Everybody says return phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Made back to the mound in a scoreless game. <laughs> Scoreless game as we go to the fourth inning. Let's check out the Aflac trivia question for today. That's a David Cohn question. Nice timing, guys. David Cohn allowed 10 runs in his Mets debut. Who holds the club record for most runs allowed in a game? In a debut. That's in a debut? That's or not what it says. It's in any game. Any game? Remember that 26 to 7? Uh, yeah, game that in Philadelphia game. Like but Gorman? Gorman? Gorman was out before then, wasn't he? I don't know. Did was it Calvin Chiraldi that came in and got hammered too? I forget. One and one to Todd Walker. 
That would be the first place I would go. Of course, the Mets back in the early days had lots of pitching problems. A team that lost 110 games or more three times in their first five seasons. So you never know. Two and one to Walker who flied out his first trip. And Maine falls behind three and one. Maine walked the first man he faced today, Juan Pierre. He was caught stealing. He allowed a single to Aramis Ramirez, and that's been it. He's retired seven in a row since then without the ball leaving the infield. He's been that good. Three and two on Walker. Well, if every start is an audition right now for a team that has six pitchers in their rotation and one more hoping to come back in Brian Bannister, then John Maine is certainly passing his audition. To left center field, long run for Beltron over in the gap, and he runs it down. Terrific play by Beltron. He had to cover a mile and a half to get to that ball. <laughs> Ty Walker just shot him a glance. He could not believe that Beltron ran that ball down. Well, he normally just glides after the balls in, in the out in the gaps, but this time he has to go get it. And he's got those beautiful strides, and man, does he cover a lot of ground and just a fine play. Right in front of the warning track. Very nice. So one long out and nobody on. Here's Aramis Ramirez, who has the only hit in this game for either side. A soft single to right. And he takes a slider for a strike. That's getting exactly what they need so far today from John Mayne. After giving up eight runs in three straight games for the first time in four years. One and two to Ramirez. Well, what I like about John Mayne is that he's very aggressive. He's very mild mannered. And has a much of a, a very big baby face. And he's a tiger out there. He's not afraid to throw his fastball. And go after hitters. And I always love that. Oh, and the Mets made the deal last winter and sent Chris Benson to the Orioles. The guy everybody concentrated on, as you look at Billy Wagner doing some tune up, was Jorge Julio. John Maine was kind of an afterthought. But even going back to spring training, you know, the Mets were talking about Maine as a guy who might surprise people and fill a role on this team and he's done exactly that and another guy 25 years of age is another key things that you build on for the future as well as the present three and two to Ramirez and the thing about Maine he's a smart kid you know he, he's a college kid he was an engineering major at UNC Charlotte he's got a brain and he's learning fast he tries to come in on Ramirez and he fouls it off well, he may just be the sleeper in uh, in all this. I mean, it was all Jorge Julio and the, you know, the chance they gamble they took on him, and just Maine's just kind of coming under the radar map, you know. And he's slowly making his presence felt toward the whole base hit, and so Ramirez is two for two. I'll say Reyes never moved on that ball. He didn't move on a ground ball in the hole last night, neither. I almost wonder if he didn't see that. That was very strange. <laughs> Well, you see him right there. Just made one step to the right. He knew he couldn't get it. It's a hot day. Conserve, conserve, conserve. So one out and one on. And now Jacques Jones, who hit a comebacker his first time up. You, know, you think about that Benson trade, and you know, Benson's had an up and down year. I think he's nine and nine right now, high ERA. Mets got Maine, who's Pitching so well right now, and they traded Julio to get El Duque. So they've gotten yes. two starting pitchers out of that deal, as it's turned out. The second might be a double play, but Valentin boots it. Does he have time to get one? He does. Nice recovery by Valentin. Would have been a double play had he been able to field it cleanly. Well, I think he, the ball came up a little bit. I think he tried to rush it because Jock Jones runs so well. Took his eye off the ball at the last minute, but recovered nicely. So he just tried to get, he tried to turn that double play too quick. 
Clarence. But got the got the Speedy Jones at first. I'd love to see Jones coming out of the box. See if he was going hard the whole way. I bet you he wasn't. Because that ball rolled around for quite a while. Well, let's see him. No, nope, he did not. He did not bust out of the box. Got a little slow out of the box. So two out, Ramirez at second, and a strike to Barrett. So now the Cubs have a runner in scoring position for the first time. Barrett grounded to short his first time up, but he's been raging hot over the last couple of weeks. Hitting 457 in his last 12 games, and only Paul Aduca has more hits as a catcher in the National League this season. Aduca getting the day off today, day game after a night game. Barrett sat last night. And the slider misses one and one. John Main making his fifth start. And he's gotten better and better with each one, culminating in that four hit shutout against the Astros last Friday night. Barrett fouls it away, one and two. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. Chris, you awake yet? Oh, am I awake? Yeah, I'm just out here baking, enjoying this wonderful day here at Shea. You know, yesterday I had a conversation with Michael Barrett about uh, the great year he's having this year. What he told me was he's, it's a little disappointing because even though personally he's having a great year, when he was traded from Oakland after the 93 season here to Chicago, he was so excited because he looked at the four pitchers that he was going to get a chance to work with. And for the most part, he's only got a chance to work with two of them because of the injuries. Valentin throws out Barrett. That ends the inning, and another zero for Maine. He keeps chalking him up. That's 14 straight shutout innings for the 25-year-old Maine. Well, let's check out the answer to the Aflac trivia question. This was a tough one. Most runs allowed in a game by a Mets pitcher. Craig Anderson and Jack Fisher. That's, that's going way days. back. Yep, that's the old days, back in the 60s. That's early, early to mid 60s, correct? Yeah, I'm looking to find out what year. Well, you look at Carlos steps in the box. He had to taught himself how to pinch. Uh, excuse me, switch hit after his first season in the bit uh, in, in in professional ball it's pretty amazing it's a late start on trying to learn to hit on another side it's very difficult to hit on one side can you see the discrepancy there in his right to left most guys even ones who begin as right hand batters wind up being better left hand hitters because they do it so much more they work more on their weak side and become better hitters on the weak side. He learned from Bernie Williams, believe it or not. Yankee center fielder, fellow Puerto Rican. And a guy that Carlos has always looked up to. Beltran's a guy who worked so hard. He had a batting cage installed in his backyard in Puerto Rico this past winter. He was out there hitting on Christmas Day. That's what Pete Rose did. Fanatical about staying in shape. Pete Rose had a cage in his various homes and took batting practice. One in Cincinnati was indoor and heated, obviously. It gets very cold, as in up north, like it does here. The guys hit more in the offseason now than they used to. Yes. I didn't touch a bat in the offseason. I, I don't recommend that. When the season was over, I just laid off for five months. Now, and for until I was 28, I didn't even work out. So I came into spring training not in shape to play. But, you know, I didn't put on weight until I turned 28. And that's why I started working out in the offseason, started a running program. And Beltron walks the third straight inning that Mark Pryor has walked the leadoff hitter. And this is not your typical Mark Pryor. And here we go, another conversation between Barrett and Pryor here. Boy, that's just stunning. Now, this is not the same Mark Pryor that we've seen in the past. Now, he hasn't given up a hit yet today, but he's now walked four batters in three innings plus. Now Beltron aboard with Delgado coming up and 
Beltron's running game has, well, it's disappeared. He's attempted one stolen base in his last 37 games. And this is one of the most successful base stealers of all time, percentage wise. Of course, he had a stolen base in the All Star game, but not in a regular season game for more than a month and a half. Delgado struck out his first time up. It's popped up. Barrett. Under it. One away. So Delgado first pitch swinging fouls out. Catchers always have it a lot tougher on these bright day games. They can't they don't have the luxury of being able to wear, you know, sunglasses behind the plate because the mask. Some of them do. Now. Do they really? Sure. Wrap around. What do they think of next? Of course, you can't have flip downs behind them. No, you could not have flips. I mean, hitters hit with sunglasses on. You never used to see that. Right. Yeah, Alex Rodriguez is one that comes to mind. A Rod. We're the only people in town not talking about A Rod these days. It's a good thing you brought him up. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Is he under a microscope or what? You can flip from sports talk show to sports talk show 24 hours a day and it's all a rod all the time. He can't even go into Central Park and get some sun. <laughs> yeah, the pitch out but Beltron not going anywhere and given how little Beltron has been running full surprising to see the Cubs pitch out. Carlos has 12 steals for the season. Now his knees have been bothering him a little bit lately, but it has seemed more as though he's not running, mostly because he has Delgado hitting behind him. And Wright takes a slider for a strike. Well, I think that Wright is one of these hitters that could hit and could hit and run. He goes the other way so well, but why would you want to do that? You got a guy with plus 20 home runs. It would have to be in a very the right situation late in the game a tie ball game maybe but you don't want him to take away his power by going the other way and there you see the stolen base attempts his knee has been bothering bothering him a little bit as you said Gare. but again it didn't stop him from stealing third base in the all-star game so I'm yeah. aware of that. So I'm, I'm just saying I, I, it seems like it's more of a situational thing than it is his knee right now. Fire not exceptional at holding runners. Two and two to right. That's trying to avoid getting swept at home for the first time this season. Last time they got swept here at Shea was last September by Washington. That's will be heading out on a road trip following today's game. Three in Atlanta over the weekend and three in Florida. And right pops one up along the line. Jock Jones has room. Two away. So two out and one on Jose Valentin coming up How does gas for free sound every weekday this summer the WB 11 is giving away 50 bucks worth of gas for free log on to WB 11.com for details on how you could win free gas and avoid traffic tie-ups by watching commuter cast. Valentin flight out to right his first time up. That's still looking for their first hit against Pryor. That's had double digits in hits in each of the first two games of this series. Seven runs on Monday, six runs last night. And they've had the advantage of having the leadoff man on each of the last three innings, but unable to break through against Pryor. Beltron still at first with two down. And it's 2-0 to Valentin. Well, this is not vintage Mark Pryor. He's throwing a lot of pitches, falling behind in the count. 
look at Nady. See the pitch count there. On two and oh, Valentine swings over the changeup two and one. Well, a good change right here. Just perfect spot to sinking. Tough pitch, two and oh, my goodness. You know what we haven't seen much for Fryer is that knee buckling curveball he used to have. That's what I think he's missing in his repertoire right now. And on the ground to first. And Mabry takes it to the bag. And another leadoff walk from Mark Pryor. But he's able to work around it again. No score as we go to the fifth. John Mabry. A gorgeous day by Flushing Bay. Perfect day for sailboating or just about anything else. Summer in New York. That's with the early day game today. And so far, the pitchers have gotten up early and the hitters are still trying to wake up. John Mabry leads off the fifth against John Maine and fouls it off. Maine has allowed just two hits over the first four innings. Walked one, struck out one. He's thrown up 14 straight shutout innings now. His curveball misses. John Mabry. He was a cardinal during the heyday of Mark McGuire when 10,000 people used to show up for batting practice to watch Big Mac hit. And Tony La Russa would occasionally spell McGuire and give Mabry a start at first base, and he used to get booed. And you know, Mabry said he understood. He said it's like paying to see Elvis and getting a garage band instead. <laughs> Well, that's a little hard on himself, <laughs> isn't it? It's <laughs> a good line, though. It is. <laughs> on one and two, Mabry takes the fastball away. Two and two. It'll be Mabry, then Angel Pagan, and Ronnie Cedeno for the Cubs in the top of the fifth. Struck him out. Maine strikes out Mabry for the second time. The second strike out of the game. Change up, got him out in front. And you see the expression on Mabry's face. You go, oh, shoot. What am I swinging at that pitch for? Well, earlier today, the sound of pile drivers was punctuating the air. Out from the construction site beyond center field. They haven't officially broken ground yet, but there's certainly a lot of dirt there. Delgado has the grounder from Pagan two way. Day by day. That's it's moving a lot of dirt. They're going to build that foundation, of course. We heard the pile drivers today. They're breaking up all that concrete out there. And at once, that parking lot that you folks have don't see anymore. There are the footings that those pile drivers are working on. Ooh, Sedeno gets brushed back 1-0. There's been a lot of little chin music today, and it's that's all fair in love and war, as they say. And we've had it from both sides. But this is a guy who's old for his last 15. Why do you brush him back? Well, well, let me tell you something. It doesn't happen today. There was a day when they would find out there are some hitters that don't like it. You knock, you knock them down one pitch, and you got them the rest of the day. Pitchers used to search for those guys. But here's a guy who's hitting 135 over his last 32 games. Does it matter? You never can be too sure. So they knew actually got off to a pretty good start with the bat for the Cubs this year, but not lately. And now main behind him three and one, and you'd love to get Sedano out and have prior lead off the next inning. This is one of those, it's an eighth hitter. Struggling, not a power hitter. Here's a fastball, hit it. Three and two. Gene Tennis, who used to be our backup catcher to Daryl Porter in the 82 Cardinals. You get in that situation, and the pitcher looking for a sign. Castro finds the pop up, has room, side retired. So Castro, who at times this year has struggled finding those foul pop-ups, knew exactly where that one was. And Maine has another shutout inning.
Gary Apple with the Chevrolet Baseball Day in New York update. Angels and the Devil Rays in the second. That's my Sarah is Tourist down the line. Part of a 10 run inning for the Angels. They lead 12 5. Back to Shea. Guys, Gary, nice bounce back to the Angels who got beat by Ty Wigginson and the Devil Rays last night. Angels tied for first place in that AL West where all four teams are within three games. Angels started out dreadfully this year. Boy, did they ever. Nady lifts one down the right field line, slicing away toward the crowd, and a nice catch by a fan of the front row. Got his blue Mets cap and his glove, and he was in the right place at the right time. With the backhand play. Nicely done. That's why you bring your glove. Nady fly to left his first trip. And while the Angels have come from far back, they were seven and a half down a month ago. How about the Twins? 33 and 8 in their last 41 games. Ron Gardenhire, has he turned into a fine manager? Every year, they take a team that nobody recognizes, nobody thinks has enough star power, and all he does is win. And in that division where it looked like they were buried. I mean they appear to be completely out of contention with the Tigers and the White Sox roaring the way they were but Chicago's come back to them and the wins just don't lose. You can see right there they're they're breathing right down the White Sox back and boy how about Detroit. What a great story. Foul ball. Everybody said after the All Star break that the White Sox would retake command of that division and there's the wild card right now. Well, the White Sox have come back to the pack. They've lost 11 of their last 14. And there's a little bit of panic on the south side. Nady pops one up behind the plate. Barrett didn't see it at first. Coming back to the screen and he makes the play. Now Barrett couldn't find it for a while, but it had just enough air under it for him to get back and make the catch. Well, you see Pryor's yelling too. It's a tough sun today. Oh, he almost he overran it. Whoa, Nelly. Nice recovery. I have to check out how much room he had. So one away. That's still looking for their first hit off Pryor. Castro walked his first time up, and he takes ball one. So after walking the leadoff hitter in each of the previous three innings. Pryor gets an out. It's been an odd day for Pryor. Four walks, but no hits. Well, he's pitched himself out of some minor jams. Looking for his first win of the year. One and one to Castro. Ramon's been struggling lately, just one for his last 16. Two and one. John Main waiting on deck. On two and one, Castro fouls one off Barrett. Two and two. Check out the Hyundai in-game box score. A lot of zeros in the left column. In fact, all zeros. That's a drawn four walks. Reyes got on on a force play and stole a base. That's the only time the Mets have had a runner in scoring position against Pryor. 2-2 to Castro. In there for a call strike three. Got him looking at the slider. Third strikeout for Pryor. Oh, a little slider. Oh, no, change up sinking it looked like. What a nice pitch. He wanted it away. Oh, that was a slider. My mistake. Had lots of plate. So two out and nobody on. Pryor with a chance for his first one, two, three inning of the game. But to see the pitch count as Maine swings and misses. And, you know, Pryor's a guy who's been hurt so much. Missed the first two and a half months with the shoulder and he's had the oblique. 
I mean, he's working on a no hitter right now, but at 83 pitches in the fifth inning, you wonder how far the Cubs would be willing to go with him. Well, if he's got a shot at a no no, they're going to stay with him. They'll, they'll ask him the question, and I'm sure any pitcher with an opportunity to throw a no hitter is going to say, I want in. But given the injury history, and given the, the problems that the Cubs have had in pushing these young starters and getting them hurt, you have to wonder. Maine bounces one right back to Pryor. And that's the easiest of innings for Pryor. He gets a one, two, three, and he's got five hitless innings in the books. We go to the sixth at Shea with no score. Now here's something new on Mets.com. You can now download the MLB.tv mosaic, and with it you can watch up to six games simultaneously on one screen, including out-of-market Mets games. It's the highest quality video of live baseball you can watch on the internet. Check it out at Mets.com. You tried that yet? No, I have mosaic. Well, we're going to have to check. It I out. would love to, but I'm doing games. Well, so why should I? Anyway, well, tonight tonight will be a perfect opportunity. There's one, two, oh, that's three. True. There are six night games going on tonight. You can watch them all at the same time. Well, I'm a little partial to you and Ronnie when I'm off. <laughs> Mark Pryor leads off the sixth inning and takes ball one. Well, how about if we go out of town tonight and we broadcast one of those games? You'll tune in. <laughs> one and one to Pryor. I mean, you can watch the, the, the Marlins and the Braves tonight. That's true. And then study up for, for the weekend. Mets will be in Atlanta. Something about a midweek day game, isn't it? It's so relaxing, such a relaxing bit atmosphere like baseball used to be. Oh, yeah, the hitters are relaxed today. Yeah. As Pryor goes down looking, third strikeout for Maine. Yeah, there have been two whole hits in this game so far. Let's check out the steep upcoming schedule. Weekend in Atlanta on the WB 11 Friday and Sunday. And back on Sportsnet New York Tuesday night from Florida. As the Mets play the Marlins. The Mets get back into the division this weekend. With the rest of the division all five games under 500 or worse. Pierre lifts one foul. Well the Mets on this upcoming road trip particularly with the Braves. Who are in second place. They are 11 and a half games out. The most they can get is if the Mets lose, go to 10 and a half. That first game in that series is very important as you look at the man's going to get the ball that night, Friday night. Pedro talking to Ray Ramirez, the trainer. It'll be Pedro's first start in exactly a month since he lost in Boston. There has to be a sense of urgency in. Atlanta on this three game series. Swinging butt by Pierre. Glow flip. Valentin can't get him. It went past Delgado. And Pierre is safe at first. That's good effort by Valentin. Did everything that he could. That is a fine play by Valentin. He just shoveled it to to Delgado and he just missed it. And even though it was a one hop to him, that is a fine play. It'll be an infield single for Pierre. Would have been a spectacular play had Delgado been able to pick that ball up. I'll tell you what, Valentin can play this game. So Pierre aboard, and now Maine's got to keep an eye on him. Pierre was caught stealing back in the first. And Walker takes a strike. Walker's been up twice, fly to center both times. Last time, a terrific running catch by Beltron. That's the hardest out that Maine has had in this game. Cubs now have three hits and the guy who has the other two Aramis Ramirez is on deck. You know Maine has one of those very effortless motions. He really stays compact not really over exerts himself. It's all very fluid. And he just continues to impress. You get the impression as a closer play at first base you get the impression that the fastball sneaks up on the hitters. That is my feeling because he certainly throws 75% fastball. I mean, sooner or later, you got to get a gauge, and some guys are sneaky. Hasn't been throwing quite as hard today as he did last Friday night when he was getting to 94 with regularity. Mm, that just missed. One and one to Walker. This could be a hit and run count here. 
He hit and run with Walker last night off a left hander. It was successful. Pierre and Walker taking a look over at Mike Quaid who's filling in as the third base coach for the Cubs. There's Quaid who had been the triple A manager for the Cubs brought up when Chris Spire had a DUI arrest and he's away from the team. In Maine keeping a close watch on Pierre. Eighty seven pitches now for Maine and so. Rick Peterson and Willie Randolph keep a close eye on him. Threw only 98 in his complete game last Friday. And he misses two and one. Well, now you've got your hit and run count, your classic hit and run count. If you look at Ramirez right now, two for two off me. Two of the three hits in the ball game. That was such a huge hitter, as hot as Ramirez is. Misses with the fastball three and one. Well, not only is he behind in the count, he's just not popping that fastball. He's getting up and away a little bit. Like his arm is just dragging a little bit. He's got to throw a strike now, and you bet the house that Pierre will be on the loose here. Almost threw that one away. And Delgado had to reach around the runner. Maine's shutout win over the Astros was his third big league win. Got his first two with the Orioles last year. The air runs, and it's ball four, and there are two men aboard for Ramirez. Second walk given up by Maine. He walked Pierre leading off the first inning, hadn't walked anybody since. And there may be some signs of fatigue. And there may be some activity down in that bullpen, too. Get somebody up down there. This is. There goes Willie. That's unusual. Usually Rick Peterson runs out there. It's a hot day and Willie's going to take Maine's temperature. I think this is Willie just taking a little control here. You got a young pitcher out there. Willie loves to give shows of confidence. I think that's why he went out there instead of Rick Peterson. I just love the way Willie handles his players. So the bullpen will get cranking as Ramirez stands in. Radford and Feliciano both begin to loosen up. Ramirez two for two, single to right, single to left. And Maine throws a first pitch strike. We know that Ramirez is a first ball fastball hitter, and it was not a good location on that slider. It was up and out over the plate. Ramirez a red hot hitter right now. Seven home runs in his last six games. Fouls back. And now Maine ahead 0 and 2. That's what I like about John is that here he is. He throws a slider first pitch, gets ahead, and comes right after him with a fastball. Now he's 0 and 2. He can do anything he wants. Jock Jones on deck. Ramirez not a particularly fast runner, so Maine would love to get a ground ball here and get a double play to get through the inning. On 0 and 2. Struck him out. That may be the best fastball he's thrown all day. When he went up the ladder, Gary, he wants it away. So it had a lot of plate, but up and out of the strike zone. Up the ladder, as we say, and got him. Big strikeout. Fourth of the day for Maine. Now two out and two on for Jacques Jones, who Maine has handled pretty well today. Come backer and a grounder to second. Bradford the right hander Feliciano the left hander staying ready. Maine about to throw his 94th pitch on a hot afternoon. And Jones watches it wide 1 and 0. Jones hitting 316 this year with runners in scoring position. For a club that hasn't scored a lot of runs. Hit a home run in the first game of this series. Did a little bat flip when he did. And now 
remain behind 2 and 0. Oh. A couple of off speed pitches to start him off. As a hitter right now, you got a red hot Marty Barrett. Your advantage, you got protection behind the in Yandex circle. Home run cut from Jacques Jones. Nearly swung out of his socks. It's two and one. Well, the Cubs, the lowest scoring team in the league, but you wouldn't know it from this series. Eight runs in each of the first two games. And that's after the Astros scored eight on Sunday. And now Maine with a good fastball on the inside edge gets even two and two. You know, it's just a situation here. It's a two fine pitches after falling behind two and oh. Fastball outside corner knee high and up and in. Fastball. The loudest the crowd has been this afternoon. Two two to Jones. A little foul ball. Pierre with great speed at second. Walker at first. Rod trying to urge Maine through the inning. On two and two, Jones watches the changeup, and it's a full count. So it'll be a head start for the runners with three and two and two down. Michael Barrett looming on deck. Big spot for John Main. 3 2 pitch. Chopper to second. Valentin makes the play. Side retired. John Main continues to be spectacular. No score. Newsday. Well, Mark Pryor making his third career start at Chase Stadium. Been pretty impressive and he's held the Mets hitless through five today it's the fifth time this season that the Mets have been held hitless through the first five innings Tim Hudson Matt Cain the combination of Mike Messina and Ron Vallone Carlos Zambrano and now Pryor in each of the first four cases the Mets broke it up in the sixth top of the batting order Reyes leads off and he takes strike one Reyes 0 for 2 got on on a fielder's choice and stole a base in the third is 41st of the year. That's need a spark. One and one. Well they're going to break it up again in the six they got the right part of the order up. And generally when you get to that sixth inning you get that third time around. In a no hit situation. Two and one to Reyes. Third time through the order, you've seen the pitcher. You should have an idea. You look at Will Omen, Omen up in the Cup bullpen. You get a gauge of the pitcher by this time of the game. Popped up. Barrett coming back on this one, but it'll be out of play. Two and two. It's the Mets home run inning presented by Amtrak Acela Express. If the Mets had a home run, one grand prize winner will win a trip anywhere in the Northeast with Amtrak Acela Express. To enter or see if you're a contestant, visit sny.tv slash Amtrak today. And I don't think there's any question that even if Mark Pryor's pitching a no-hitter, he's not going nine innings today. That's why Omen's up in the bullpen. His next pitch will be his 90th, and they're not going to take chances with his arm. Just too many injuries. And he's only 25 years old. Too, the way. too valuable a commodity. I mean, we had David Cohn in the booth earlier, and he was talking about pitch counts. Well, he wants to throw 166 pitches in a game here at Shea. And Buddy Harrelson was managing, and sometimes far is too far. Popped up. Moving in is Todd Walker. One away. So Reyes now 0 for 3 and his struggles continue. One out and nobody on. Here's Andy Chavez. He's had the only RBI opportunity for the Mets today when Reyes stole second in the third inning. Breyer struck him out on a 3 2 fastball. That's the only time the Mets have had a runner in scoring position this afternoon. And the slider misses 1 and 0. 
Well, I think Pryor is one of those guys with a sneaky fastball, too. That was an up and in fastball that jammed Reyes. Another one of those straight up and down effortless motions, and all of a sudden it's in pop. Chavez fouls it away, 94 miles an hour. That's as hard as Pryor's thrown all day. Camp day at Shea. And if you can't see anybody score, at least you can do the wave. Two and one. Kids love 10 to 9 games. Yes. You have to grow into one nothing games. But they look like they're having a good time. Are they paying attention? <laughs> Those two girls. Three and one. They're paying attention to each other. <laughs> They're having a good old time. Have a hot dog, have some cotton candy, soda, popcorn, peanuts. It's a lot of happiness. Sitting on your chair, Indian style. Or you can just play with your Game Boy. <laughs> Three one on the way. Three and two. See, that's a satisfied youngster. Got a baseball game in front of him, got his munchies in his lap, got his buddies around him, and a PSP. What else do you need? <laughs> you know, there's a ball game going on, kid. It's like someone pull his batteries. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't quite get. Three and two to Chavez with one out. Just got a piece to stay alive. Carlos Beltran waiting on deck. Well, this 12 o'clock start, everybody is still in the sun here, baking in the ballpark. I like that, the sunscreen concession. On the ground, Mabry with a nice stop. Pryor gets there in time, two away. John Mabry's had a nice day at first base. Well, if you're going to throw a no-no, you need plays like that. Very nice play. More impressive the speed to Pryor. And watch Pryor coming over. Look at his underhand toss. Perfect lead. And most importantly, Pryor got the ball a step and a half in front of first base in time to catch it, then look for the bag. Well, Dusty Baker's on his way out to the mound. Pryor, right about 100 pitches now. Dusty has not made a sign yet, but Pryor might be done. He can't get one more out? Well, I think they're very careful with him in terms of pitch count. I'll ask the question. Pryor also, when he's covered first base today, has moved very, very slowly back to the mound. Remember, he's had leg problems in the past, Achilles, hamstring, in addition to all the shoulder and elbow problems. And Dusty's going to leave him in for one more. I want you to get out now. That's a tough call for any man if you dealing with a very expensive and valuable commodity in Fryer. The Cubs are going nowhere. And even if he's working on a no hitter, the last thing in the world they want to do is jeopardize him as far as his future is concerned. So he'll throw to one more batter. Beltron is fouled out and walked 0 for 1. Beltron has a home run in his career against Pryor, just 1 for 8. Two and 0. Oh. Well, if he doesn't get Beltron, we'll probably see Omen, the left-hander, coming to face Delgado. No hitter or no no hitter. Which is what the Mets have had in their history. No, no hitter. Three and no to Beltron. I'd give him a hit sign right here. Might as well. Tight ball game. Might look for something middle in the drive. He takes a strike, three and one. It's 
Roberto Novoa. Getting up now, the right hander. 3 1 to Beltron, ball four. And there's the fifth walk given up by Pryor. And that may be the last pitch he throws. Here comes Dusty, and that's it for Pryor. So after five and two thirds, no hit innings, Pryor will exit. And the lefty Will Ullman will come on to face Delgado. 103 pitches for Pryor, making his second start since coming back from the disabled list. And he completely understands, I'm sure, although Dusty practically has to rip the ball out of his hand. This kid knows where he's been, and I think he knows where he hopes to be going. He looks like he's a little tired, too. It's a hot day. Well, he's not leaving it. Happy, but he's leaving. And he gets a nice ovation from the crowd here at Shea, appreciative of a, a good effort by a special pitcher. So Pryor won't get his first win of the year, but he certainly can leave in courage. And Holman comes on to face Delgado. Lefty Will Holman takes over the pitching for the Cubs. The lefties to a 167 average. He's the big hard thrower. We saw him in Chicago, Gary. He came in some re in a relief in one of, the, one of those three games. The Mets played in Chicago last road trip. He did his job. I don't think Carlos is ready to hit here. He tried to quick pitch him. And so Gary Cedarstrom calls time. Well, the last no hitter in the big leagues was Randy Johnson's perfect game two years ago. The second to last one. Was a six pitcher effort by the Astros capped by Billy Wagner at Yankee Stadium. So the Cubs will try and do it in combo fashion today. Meyer leaves after five and two thirds, no hits, five walks, three strikeouts. Odato is not used to struggling like that against lefties. Well, he, he struggled mightily. I think he was probably his longest slump of his career this year. He has broken out recently, though. And Oman throws him a fastball strike, nothing in one. No, Oman's just over the top straight fastball. If you look at Mark Pryor there, and that towel right there is. If that's a wet towel, it's always dipped in a, it's uh, put in a bucket of ammonia water. Which was always so refreshing in a hot at summer afternoon. It'll wake you up anyway. There goes Beltron. Barrett's throw to second, not in time. So Carlos Beltron, who had not had a stolen base in a month and a half, picks up his 13th of the year. Well, that's the time to do it. A big leg kick from the left hander. He broke from the belt. Not a chance to throw him out. It's not a bad throw, really. Well, it's in front. He had to rush it. He knew he didn't have a chance. Stolen off the pitcher. So for whatever reason, Beltron has not been running. He found the right spot for it there. Now the Mets are a base hit away from taking the lead. But a base hit is something they haven't had all day. On one and one, Delgado bounces one to second. And Walker throws him out to end the inning. So the Mets have been held hitless through six. Oldman gets the final out of the inning behind Pryor. And we go to the seventh with no score. Gary Apple with the Chevrolet Baseball Day in New York update. Tigers, Indians, that's Maglio Ordonez off CC Sabathia. It knocks it a couple of runs. It's 4 0 Tigers in the seventh. Back to Gary and Keith at Shea. Tigers trying to go to 35 games over 500 today. On a beautiful afternoon in New York, John Main with 16 scoreless innings under his belt throws ball one to Michael Barrett. Barrett's been up twice, grounded out both times. Good pitch right there. Now, Maine has already thrown more pitches in this game than he did in his complete game shutout 
on Friday night. And it's ahead on Barrett one and two. So they'll keep an eye on Maine here in the seventh now at 103. Bullpen stays ready. One two to Barrett struck him out came up and in with a fastball five strikeouts for John Maine. He likes to go up the ladder and he's effectively does it there off Michael Barrett as he did when he struck out Aramis Ramirez back in the sixth inning when he was in trouble. As you see Bradford and Feliciano up for the Metsies. Here's Mabry who's been up twice and struck out both times. And he takes the change up for a strike nothing in one. And Maine's gotten good mileage out of that change up today. He's getting good mileage out of it because he uses it sparingly and it's fastball sets everything up for him. Throws a curveball and misses one on one. He is really throwing a fine game. Roberto Navoa up in the Cubs bullpen. Pitcher due up fifth in the inning. Again upstairs with the fastball and ahead one and two. A lot of the Cubs hitters have been chasing that high cheddar. Well, John Maine continues to impress. And regardless of what happens here today, he certainly has made it. All but certain that he's going to get another start at a time where Willie Randolph has to weed somebody out. Struck him out. Six strikeouts from May in the third time he's gotten Mabry two away. Well, maybe he's making a statement. That's just a fastball right by him. Wow. And I think that's making a statement to Willie. I'm not tired. In 2006, Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York are teaming up to strike out cancer. For every K, the Mets pitching staff registers. Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York will donate $25 to the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund. If you'd like to help, please go to www.hopeandheroes.org. Strike one to Angel Pagan. Pagan's been up twice, grounded out to the right side both times. And the curveball misses one and one. Well, you've got Pedro coming back Friday. You've got Glavin, you've got Traxel. And they're not going anywhere. And then you've got the other three. Maine, Pelfrey, El Duque. And they'll go once around the rotation this time with six, but then they've got to make a choice. And Maine certainly looks like a choice. Three and one. Well, competition's a wonderful thing, and we've said it more than a few times this year. It's been a constant effort when Bannister went down to fill that fourth and fifth starter, that void there, and there's been lots of comers, no takers. Ball four, and Pagan draws a walk. Third given up by Maine. So John Maine now at 114 pitches, and we'll see how much further they'll push him. You got the number eight hitter, Ronnie Cedeno, who has not had a hit in a week and a half. So Maine will get one more batter here. Rick Peterson, though, will take a trip to the mound before he does. And it's a good time. And you know, Delgado's already out there. They know the bullpen's up. They know there's one out away from getting out of this inning. It's a hot day. Maine's not used to going this deep, particularly in the pitch count. Give him a breather. Go get this guy. Maine threw 98 pitches in his complete game last Friday. But he has shown some stamina here on a hot day. Sedano 0 for 2 today, 0 for his last 16. And so Maine trying to get one more out before handing it off to the bullpen. No score, seventh inning. Pagan at first is not stolen the base. Castro's already thrown one out today. He got Juan Pierre back in the first. High fastball misses one and zero. Oh. You notice Castro motioning with his hands after he caught that ball. Something that Ramon does so well, motioning down with his glove. Get it down. Come on, concentrate. Your last batter. One and notice Cedeno. Good fastball one and one. 
There it is. He wants it away. It's not like he's thrown on the corners. He's just getting the high fastball that gets a lot of plate, and guys are swinging right through it, Gary. And that just gives you the impression it's sneaking up on them, that they're not seeing it well. One and two to Cedeno. And so now John Main looking to put the hammer down. That's a fastball up and away. It just threw it right by him. Nine shutout innings in his last start, going for seven today. Struck him out. John Main strikes out three batters in the seventh. Seven for the game. 17 straight scoreless innings for John Main. Now the most advanced traffic information is just a click away with WB11.com's commuter cast. Get real-time traffic updates on your computer every weekday afternoon at 4. Log on to WB11.com for commuter cast. Well, well, John Main has held the Cubs scoreless. The Mets are still looking for their first hit. Well, this is the guy that could be ripe for the picking here. You see his numbers, the ERA over five. Look at the batting averages. Very high off Novoa's last time out it was in Washington. Excuse me. Yes, Washington. And the last time the Mets saw him was in the course of that 11 run inning at Wrigley Field two Sundays ago. He gave up the last six runs in that inning, including a grand slam to Carlos Beltran and a two run homer to David Wright, who leads off the bottom of the seventh. That was that meltdown inning. All those runs he gave up were unearned. So not even reflected in that high ERA. David today has walked and fly to right. Novoa the third Chicago pitcher and he misses badly. One and oh. Mark Pryor went five and two thirds did not allow a hit. But threw one hundred and three pitches and had to come out. Will Oman got the final out of the sixth. Juanter Sanchez getting set to pitch the eighth for the Mets after seven terrific innings from John Maine. One and one to right. Now, from an offensive point of view here, you know that your starter is throwing a heck of a gutty game, a great game. You know he's going to probably, that's his last inning. You really want to go up there and try to get a run for him, get him on the win column. Well, you can't do any better than John Maine has done his last two starts. And at a time when Glavin is struggling, and Traxel comes off a bad outing, and Pedro's been out for a month, and El Duque's been up and down. John Maine has been a godsend. Well, he's got to feel very good about himself. Well, what a finish, striking out the side. Novoa ahead one and two. And Wright bounces one toward the hole. Cedeno with a tough play. Got him! Wow! Terrific play by Ronnie Cedeno, one man down. Well, you're not kidding, Gary. On the run, has no time to plan, just throwing on the run. Right there, a strike, and boy, just got David. Nice backhand, but this is the play right here, the accurate throw with mustard on it. Just got David by a half step. Cubs have played some good defense today. One out and nobody on. Valentin takes a strike. Valentin has fly deep to right and grounded out to first 0 for 2. Mets have drawn five walks today but still looking for their first hit. One and one to Valentin. I wonder if Billy Wagner is having flashbacks. <laughs> to that six pitcher combined no hitter that he anchored against the Yankees. Valentin takes a strike. Last time the Mets were no hit was in 1993 in Houston when Daryl Kyle pulled it off. Mets actually scored a run in that game on an error. Lost four to one. Two and two to Valentin. You can see that Navoa is a hard thrower. 96 mile an hour fastball. That's some serious mustard. Fists. Still two and two. 
Well, the Cubs have gotten great bullpen pitching in this series. Navoa got victimized in Chicago when the Mets saw him, but they had four relievers last night, four the night before, all hang up zeros. Still two and two to Valentin. Valentin had a pitch to hit right there and got under, just fouled it back. Good cut. We'll see his reaction here after if we. He, so he slams his bat gently on the ground. On two and two, Jose takes high and it's three and two. Well, that's about some good at bats today. Just not able to break through yet. Nice catch out there. Pedro working on the bubble gum. David Wright still trying to figure out how Ronnie Cedeno threw him out. Twenty six year old Roberto Navoa working on Valentin. This will be the ninth pitch and he pops it up shallow center. Pierre broke back now coming on and he can't get it. Neither can Cedeno and Valentin will have to settle for a single. The first hit of the game for the New York Mets. A little pop fly that Cedeno couldn't quite get to. Yeah, listen to the crowd. <laughs> Well, there's no drama in a multiple pitcher no hitter. Well, you're right there, and Cedeno just he stopped. And you're right, Gary, that Pierre got a bad break on it. I well, remember that 11 run inning in Chicago. Pierre broke back on a ball. I think by Delgado that fell in front of him, and that really set the stage for that big inning. Something that you see a lot with Pierre. So now the Mets have a one out base runner for Nady and stop them having to worry about no hitters and that's been said about just trying to win this game and right now just trying to get a run for John Maine. Nady's fly to left and fouled out to the catcher. Missing high, 1 0. Doesn't seem like he has a whole lot of confidence in his other pitches outside of that 96 mile an hour fastball. And that's why I think his ERA is up there in the fives. He doesn't have a breaking ball to go with it. He's just a steamroller. Baby. <laughs> James Taylor. Nice job. Now John Main has been front and center today. And now the Mets try to find another hero. Nady pops it up. Foul ball. Mabry, does he have room? He does. Two out. So two away and it's left to Ramon Castro you saw Scott air up in the bullpen with an eye toward a possible pinch hitting appearance by Cliff Floyd. Although for the moment it's Julio Franco who's come out on deck. Floyd getting the day off today so Dusty Baker hedging against that by getting air up. You have got to have more than a couple left handers in your bullpen against the Mets with this left handed switch hitters and, and left hand hitters. Here's Castro takes a slider outside one and oh Castro's walked and struck out just one for his last 17 so it's been a struggle for Castro it's averaged down to 235 but he's done a very nice job backing up Laduca he's already thrown out a base dealer today and he's got some pop three home runs on the year fouls this one off one and one. Check out the Toyota scoreboard. Only one other game going in the National League. Pirates leading in Milwaukee on a Freddie Sanchez home run. Uh, RBI, what a great year he's had. 
San Diego and L.A. The Dodgers have lost 11 of 12 now to sink to the bottom of that National League West. Phillies face Brandon Webb and the Diamondbacks tonight. The you know, Dodgers are a funny team. They just another streaky team. Jekyll Hyde. They were scoring early in the season, but they've stopped. Two and one to Castro. The rest of the schedule tonight: Florida and Atlanta. John Smoltz pitches tonight, which means the Mets won't see him over the weekend. The Braves have yet to announce their rotation for the series against the Mets. But the Mets will see Hudson somewhere along the way. Cincinnati with a one and a half game lead in the wild card, playing in Houston against Andy Pettit tonight. We have their ace Bronson Arroyo on the mound. Two one to Castro, low ball three. Barrett had a mind about throwing down to first base, but dropped the ball. Now it's three and one to Castro. So Ramon trying to keep the inning going with Franco on deck to pinch hit if he does. Novoa behind in the count, three and one. There's a strike. Castro with the deke toward first base, but Gary Cedarstrom said no. And Ramon is just opening up his shoulder too quick right now. He's in this little funk and he doesn't play every day. It's very difficult to come out of a, a one for 17, is what he's in right now. It's tough. You don't play every day. Valentin runs, hit to center field, hit well. Pierre going back, but he has room. Side retired. Castro didn't quite get enough as he drove it to straightaway center. And so Navoa able to work out of trouble in the seventh. No win for Maine today. Scoreless game. Well, we were expecting a pitcher's duel last night here at Shea. Instead, we got one here today. Mark Pryor looking for his first win of the year. John Maine trying for his second straight. Pryor left with a no hitter going, not happy to exit. Maine kept on going through seven shutout innings. He's hung up 17 zeros in a row, but not enough today. A scoreless game as we go to the eighth. And Juaner Sanchez takes over the pitching for New York. Sanchez pitched in the opening game of the series on Monday night and worked a 1 2 3 ninth. He's had a tremendous year for the Mets and looking to hold the fort here in the top of the eighth. Phil Nevin will pinch hit for the Cubs. Nevin hit his 18th home run of the year last night. Started the first two games of this series at first base. So Sanchez will take on Nevin, Juan Pierre, and Todd Walker here in the top of the eighth. And Nevin swinging at the first one, fouls off the slider, nothing at one. Well, as a pinch hitter, it's always the rule: thou shall not pass. You get, you cannot go up as a pinch hitter and take strikes. You got to go up there and hit. Nevin one for seven in his career against Sanchez, and he takes another slider, one and one. Ron Pierre on deck, and then Todd Walker. So two left-hand hitters coming up behind Nevin. Inside two and one. Well, another sparkling effort by John Maine today. 17 straight scoreless innings. And through six appearances, five starts, Maine now has a 2.45 ERA. He has just been terrific. Taken low, and now Sanchez behind three and one. Well, they know that Nevin is a fastball hitter. 2 1 slider right there. Very respectful of Nevin. From a pitcher, Sanchez, who's not afraid to throw his fastball. On 3 and 1, Nevin takes another slider for a strike. Well, in a spot where a leadoff walk is certainly something Nevin would be willing to take. Sanchez nonetheless throws the breaking ball on three and one and right on the corner if you noticed. Three two to Nevin. The right center field. Nady drifting. One away. 
So one out and nobody on. Juan Pierre coming up. Be part of the celebration at Shea with Mets season tickets. Pro-rated packages include postseason ticket purchase options and priority access for season tickets in the new Mets ballpark. To get your season tickets for the rest of 2006, call 718-507-TIXX or go to Mets.com today. Pierre has been aboard twice today with a walk and a bunt single. Was thrown out stealing back in the first inning. And it's another swinging bunt. Sanchez fields and throws him out. A little more of a swing, a little less of a bunt than the last one. And not in a good spot. Well, he just put, pushed it hard. He wanted to kind of butcher boy it. And it just didn't get the job done. Right back to the pitcher, Sanchez. It's the second baseman, Todd Walker. So two out and nobody on. Here's Todd Walker. Walker 0 for 2 and a walk and a long fly ball to left center that Beltron ran down in the fourth inning. Best defensive play the Mets have made today behind Maine. 1 0 to Walker. Well, I guess the question is going to be if Maine is in, and you know he's got to be in, who's out? El Duque is going to pitch Saturday. We know that. Pelfrey has not yet been slotted into a start. Could pitch Sunday, but that's certainly not guaranteed. Could be Glavin on Sunday instead well, on regular rest. I saw him before today's game in the in the dugout, and he told me he had the opener in Florida. Florida. So, one thing's for certain: if it becomes a numbers game, they're not going to put Mike Pelfrey in the bullpen. Well, right now. John Maine is pitching better than Mike Pelfer. That's what I'm saying. So if it comes to it, they're going to put possibly Pelfrey back in a position where he can pitch every fifth day. Would they consider putting El Duque in the bullpen? That has potential because El Duque is a veteran and would be able to pitch out of the pen. It's going to be interesting questions to ask, particularly, you know, you got the trading deadline coming up on Monday, and that could change everything if they make a deal for a pitcher. Two and two to Walker with two out. And hard but right at Valentin. Plenty of time. Side retired. One, two, three inning for Duaner Sanchez. We remain scoreless. And the Mets, nine, one, and two in the order coming up. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Metz and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Metz. Changes for the Cubs as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Nafi Perez comes in to play second base. He'll bat ninth in a double switch. Scott Ayer comes in to pitch. This is a smart move by Dusty Baker. It keeps Cliff Floyd in the dugout. Keeps Cliff Floyd in the dugout. Plus you've got Reyes. Well, Reyes is a better right-hand hitter, but you got Chavez. You're making Beltron bat right-handed. You got Delgado, so it is the right move. Instead, Julio Franco will pinch in. Now, Franco got off to a great start this year. On the 22nd of June, he was hitting 346. Since then, he's 7 for 42. That's a 167 clip over the last five weeks. So Franco leads off against Air, who's now pitching in all three games of this series. First two games, he came on to get Beltron and Delgado. So he'll face different hitters this time. And Franco takes a strike. Julio 0 for 6 in his career against Scott Air. Reyes to follow, and then Andy Chavez here in the last of the eighth. Mets have had just one hit this afternoon. 0 oh 2 to Franco. A pop fly single by Jose Valentin with one out in the seventh. Mark Fire started, left with a no hitter intact after five and two thirds. Having thrown 103 pitches, Will Oman got the last out of the sixth. Roberto Novoa gave up that lone hit in the seventh. And Billy Wagner getting set to pitch the ninth for New York. The Cubs have had only three hits. Two to Franco. It's a little tougher position for Franco this year. He played, got a lot more playing time in Atlanta because 
You have the left handed first baseman swinging first baseman over there LaRoche Adam LaRoche. He was able to platoon more but with Delgado here at first base his. Starting time is diminished as he goes down swinging and so therefore he's basically been a pinch hitter. At one stretch during those American League games where he DH a little bit played some first base. But it's been a rough stretch for Franco who will turn 48 years of age in less than a month. So here's Reyes and he's been struggling in his own right 0 for 3 today 6 for 38 since coming back from the finger injury. Facing the veteran lefty Scott Ayer. And he lights a base hit. And that's a huge base hit for Reyes. Getting his speed aboard in a scoreless game. Well, he fastball hits here, fastball up. And we'll kind of blow it had right down the middle. And boy, you don't let those ones go. Those are cripple hits right there. And he's such a good hitter, right handed. And such a nice natural swing. Well, early in the season, Willie Randolph would not have dreamed of letting Andy Chavez hit against the left hander. But Andy's done okay. Eight for 24 against lefties. That's a 333 average. Reyes has already stolen a base today, his 41st of the year. And Air checks in on. Chavez 0 for 2 in a walk today. Nathan Perez at second base shortened up considerably with the speed at the plate and at first base. Well, Jose, we know he's seen enough of him. He's not one of those guys that it steals on the first pitch. He likes to get the measure of a pitcher. He usually waits deep in the count to steal a base. And he's done that well this year. He leads the National League, of course. Not a huge lead. And Chavez takes the breaking ball for a strike. Watch his front shoulder. Whoopee, he buckled him right there, that's what we say. <laughs> that curveball buckled him. It happens. Pretty good curve. Or slider. And Air had Reyes moving back to the bag at first when he delivered that pitch. So Reyes didn't look like he had a very good read. Ramirez in on the grass at third to guard against the bunt. Always a threat from Chavez. Yet to use any kind of good move on Reyes. Just three show me's. He doesn't have much of a move over there. He's just not going to let Reyes take a chance and break when he breaks from the belt. He does that, he's got an easy stolen base. This is with the fastball, one on one to Chavez. That's trying to break through here in the bottom of the eighth. A game that's featured only five hits. Three by the Cubs, two by the Mets. Well, they got the big boppers up next. He's Delgado. We I mean, have Beltron and Delgado. And yeah, Beltron and Delgado both have seen air twice in this series. And the breaking ball has Chavez badly fooled one and two. Tries to stay in, can't hold up. Completely fold on that breaking ball. Well, Scott Ayer has been a terrific situational left-hander over the last half dozen years. Lefty's hitting just 200 against him this year. Him over from the Giants signed a three-year deal, and he has been exactly what the Cubs would have hoped for. They just wish they had more important games to use him in. Ahead on Chavez now one and two. And Andy loops one shallow center. Pierre will get under this one. And that's the second out. So Pierre, who had one fall in front of him in the last inning, this time got a better break. And two away. Well, here's Beltron, who's walked twice today and stolen the base, his first steal in a month and a half. 
On Monday night, Beltron had a sacrifice fly against Air. Last night, he grounded out to short against him. You get three looks at the same pitcher in the same series. Got to help you out to a certain extent, you'd think. Well, I've got to believe he knows what Air throws. Now, granted, he has not been in the National League that long. But you get familiar with the pitchers real quick. The three divisions have changed everything. We only play the teams uh, six games out of division, one away and one home. You face your, the opposing divisional pitchers. But with relief pitchers, who you might face three, four times a season, can you get as good a read as you would on starters? It's just different. Normally, you're facing relievers when the game's on the line late in the game, and you, it's, it's more primordial hitting. See the ball and hit it. Don't think too much. It's like Yogi Berra said, you can't think and hit at the same time. That's right. And, you know, Yogi thunk up there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Yogi was a notorious bad ball hitter. 2-0 to Beltron with Delgado on deck. Ramirez guarding the line at third. Blooped out of the shallow center, and that'll fall in for a hit, and Reyes will get to third. Takes a turn and holds on. Beltron broke his back, but he dunks it in. And the Mets have first and third with two down. Like a breaking ball in the outside corner that had Beltron fooled. Broke his back, and I guess air holding him on, I don't guess, I know. Prevented Reyes from stealing. If Reyes steals a base, that's the one-run lead. Well, he knew how far Pierre was going to have to come to get that ball, and so he turned on the Jets and took a turn at third just in case. Michael Wirtz up there in the bullpen for the Cubs. So here's Delgado. Who, like Beltron, has faced air each of the last two nights, walked on Monday night, flied out to left last night. First time in the game, either team's had a runner to third base. Uh, throw to first, and Reyes dashed about 30 feet down the line on that toss. Well, this is a situation where Reyes always gets, likes to, to get into people's heads. He's a energetic here, trying to get, not, not any, let anybody fall asleep. Now, I don't think Beltron will steal here. You want Carlos Delgado to be swinging the bat. You want to leave that hole open for him between first and second. He's got a big hole between third and short. And Delgado waves at the breaking ball, nothing in one. So this defensive alignment right here, well, there's a, not a good swing on a slider right there, but the, the infield defense, the way it's set up, oh, I love that right there. That hole between the shortstop and third base and most left handers and I think particularly now with Delgado they're going to throw him away just go right there hit a ground ball in that hole one nothing. Fouls it off and now air ahead of him 0 and 2. I'm easier said than done but that would be my approach because lefties like always love to think they can get you out with that slider away. Well he's throwing them two in a row to get ahead. Now Delgado was a different hitter than I was. I was more of an all-field hitter and not a home run hitter like Delgado was, nor a pull hitter like Delgado was. And they probably would not have positioned me this much to pull. They probably would not have had the shortstop that much more up the middle. But we've seen Delgado with two strikes go that way. Got a 0 for 3 on the day. Looking to hit from behind in the count. There goes Beltron, and it's ball one and no throw. So Beltron steals a base, his second of the game. Now a base hit could play two. Well, the Cubs weren't going to throw that. They were going to concede the stolen base. Too many things could happen with Reyes at third and his speed. One and two now to Delgado. Here's throwing him three breaking balls in a row. Struck him out with a fastball. Now there's a great job by Scott Ayer. His second strikeout of the inning. 
And the Mets with their best scoring chance of the day, strand two. We go to the ninth, no score. Gary Apple with this Chevrolet Baseball Day in New York update. Twins White Sox, that's Michael Kadire and say goodbye his 14th home run of the year. Twins up 2-0 in the third. Back to Gary and Keith for the ninth at Shea. They go to the ninth at Shea. Billy Wagner comes on to try and preserve the tie. Standard strategy once you get to the ninth inning of a tie game at home to bring on your closer. Because you can't possibly have a save situation once you get to this point. Aramis Ramirez leads off. And it takes a strike. Ramirez two for three today. Seven home runs in his last six games. Two home runs in his career against Billy Wagner. Nothing in two. Well, Wagner has said he wants more work and needs more work. He put one inning last night, and here he is back in here again. Last night, Billy gave up a two out double to Nafi Perez, but then got Ramirez to pop up ahead of him here, 0 and 2. Breaking ball misses, 1 and 2. Well, all three of pitches have been sliders. They know that Ramirez loves that cheddar, as we say in the jargon. Left hand hitter on deck, Jacques Jones. 1 2 pitch. Hit high in the air to left center, playable for Beltron. One out. Every week during the offseason, join us for your connection to the New York Jets as they gear up for another season of gangrene football. Jets Nation, Saturdays at 11, only on Sportsnet, New York. Here's Jacques Jones, 0 for 3, grounded out all three times. And Wagner is death on left hand hitters. It's hard to believe that the NFL is getting started this week. All the camps are opening. All those big, heavy set guys out there in this heat, they can, oh boy. They all love those two a days, don't they? And the slider misses, 1 and 1 to Jones. Fastball by him, 97 miles an hour. Well, that wasn't even close. That was like dial it up two notches. My goodness, not a good swing at all. That's an overmatch. He started that swing when the ball was in Castro's glove. The shortstop, big hop for Reyes. Two out. So two up and two set aside by Wagner in the top of the ninth. And here is Michael Barrett. Barrett 0 for 3 today after getting the night off last night. As Michael Wirtz and Ryan Dempster work. Dempster, the closer, remember, was taken out in the ninth inning last night. And Bobby Howery got the save. And the slider in for a strike to Barrett. And I'm sure that Dusty Baker would want to go right back to Dempster if he gets a safe situation today. Well, it's been that way with Dempster all year. It's been an in and out year for him. And Wagner gets ahead. He's thrown a lot of sliders here in the ninth inning. He's got a good one, Gary. And he, when he throws it and he gets it over, it, it, it's such an effective weapon for him with that blazing fastball. On 0 2, struck him out. One, two, three inning for Billy Wagner at the top of the ninth. The Mets will have David Wright coming up to lead off in the last of the ninth in a scoreless game. Yes, the attendance. All right, you have 15 seconds. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit Geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Jeep, the all-new seven-passenger Jeep Commander. It's your world. Take command. And by the New York State Smokers Quit Line, call 1-866-NY-QUITS for free help and advice. Start your smoke-free life today. Michael Wirtz takes over the pitching for the Cubs as we go to the last of the ninth. 
And that ERA is a bit deceptive. He's pitched well in this series. This one outing before prior to the first game. Uh, Paul LaDuca to ground out, the only battery face. They'll take on David Wright, Jose Valentin, and Xavier Nady. Mets have nine walk-off wins this year, and Wright has had a hand in most of them. Takes ball one. It's a rare offer for David. David's one of those hitters that can always sneak that one hit in. He was robbed of a hit his last time up by Ronnie Cedeno. Aramis Ramirez practically standing on the line at third to guard against the extra base hit. And the outfield playing deep. Left fielder Angel Pagan playing much deeper than Merton played in the first two games. Three and out to right. Uh, David trying to get on to start the last of the night. Glendon Rush, the former Met up in the Cubs bullpen. Mets have had only three hits today. And Wright takes a call strike three and one. Borderline pitch called to strike by Gary Cedarstrom. Michael Wirtz has spent most of this year in the minor leagues after pitching 75 games for the Cubs last year. Three one to Wright. An ugly cut three and two. It's not your three and one swing. No, it just looked like David was caught in between here. He had his fanny flying out and not a good swing for three and one. And he takes it ball four. And the Mets have the potential winning run on base. The sixth walk the Mets have drawn in this game. Prior walk five. And now we'll say Valentin comes up and we'll see if Willie wants the bunt. Sorry, Rothschild will go to the mound. I think he's going to talk to him real quick about maybe the potential hit and run with Valentin. Checking out the AOL game summary. Mark Pryor left with a no hitter with two out of the sixth inning. John Main was spectacular again. Seven shutout innings. He's thrown 17 straight scoreless innings. Not a whole lot of hitting. On a better high speed internet, you belong at AOL. Well, this would be a nice game as you look at Jose Valentin's numbers. For the Mets to win, a nice game to win here to start your road trip with your three going to Atlanta for three and Florida for three. You don't want to start it off with a being swept at home. So this was a big, big one to get for them. Mabry will hold against Wright. Valentin steps in. The Cubs look for the bunt with Ramirez cheating in from third. Pops it up foul and out of play. So Willie playing conservative here on the bunt. Which is fine. Then the question is does he stay with it. Valentin has three sacrifice bunts this year. It's your six hitter and you're bunting with them on a six hitter. That's a very good situational hitter. And the next two guys, Nady and Castro, have struggled with runners in scoring position this year. And so Heilman up the bullpen. Of course, you got Cliff Floyd sitting on the bench, and that's why Dusty has Glendon Rush up in the bullpen. Absolutely. I and mean, they've got three guys in that bullpen. There's Cliff. And that is a very big weapon against this Met club. We said it earlier. Valentin still bunting, and he pops it up, and this one's playable, and Barrett makes the catch. So Valentin unable to get the bunt down, one away. Well, I would have been more inclined to let Valentin swing, regardless of the result. He's been swinging the bat good. He hit, hit and ran with him yesterday. And again, even if you're successful, the next two guys, right hand hitters who have not fared well in RBI situations. Well, there's Willie's reaction. <laughs> well, that's why he manages down there. He can never believe when a guy can't get a bunt down. Here's Nady, 0 for 3 on the day. Wright tried to steal a base back in the second inning. And was caught by Michael Barrett.
good time for Nady to try to get something poking that hole over there between the second and first baseman. It is a big hole. Lays off, and he stopped it in time. One and one. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez, Chris Cotter with you from Shea Stadium in New York. The Mets trying to avoid getting swept in a series at home for the first time this year, and it's been a nail biter. John Main pitched seven terrific innings. Mark Pryor left with a no hitter going with two out of the sixth. Mets trying to win in their final turn at bat. 1 1. Nady hits one in the air to left center. Playable for Pierre. Two away. So two out right back to first and is left to Ramon Castro. Ramon Castro. You've got three catchers. Would you be inclined to spend Floyd here? The bat for Castro? You could. You could definitely do that. Willie will stick with Castro. And he takes ball one, Barrett down to first, but Wright gets back. The question then becomes, and this is the beauty of late innings in baseball, does Dusty go out and get his left-hander, Glendon Rush? And then does Willie waste Floyd? I don't think he would. No, he'd stick with stick him. Stick with him. And Rush isn't a guy who dominates left-hand hitters. But that's the beauty of the game when you have all this late inning maneuvering. Of course, then you also have Wagner out on deck. And I'm sure that Willie will bring Wagner back. Although Cliff Floyd is now out in the on deck circle, just replaced Wagner there. So if Castro keeps it going, Floyd would bat for Wagner. And Floyd would face Glendon Rush. There's a strike one and one. Of course, Castro could make that whole thing moot with an extra base hit here. There's the former Met Rush. And Glendon has just kind of been, you was starting and has been pushed back in that bullpen. He's kind of the forgotten man in that pen. He's been a swing guy ever since he got to Chicago. One and one to Castro. Waves at the slider, one and two. A pretty good breaking ball here out of the strike zone tough pitch to lay off and Ramon has just been struggling. He's in a one for 18 hole right now and now behind in the count one and two. Just looking to get a hold of one. Castro with three home runs on the year. Right at first and two down. Line drive base hit. And Castro keeps it going, and now the potential winning run moves to second, and Cliff Floyd will come up to pitch it. And he has been announced. And here's the pitch right here, a hanging breaking ball that Ramon stays back, rips it. Dusty Baker looks like he's ready to come out there on that top step. He just told Barrett to go out to the mound. Now, Rush has been warming up a long time. You wouldn't think he needs... A whole lot more. Floyd has had great numbers over the years against Glendon Rush. A 385 average in 26 at bats, including a couple of home runs. But it's Glendon Rush whom Dusty Baker wants. And so Floyd will face a guy he's handled well in the past. The former Met Glendon Rush comes on. We'll see if Floyd can win it for New York. 31 year old Glendon Rush, who was a mainstay of the Mets rotation back in 2001. He has not had a good year for the Cubs. And you can see right there, Gary, that batting average against the lefties against him. And he's going to face one in Cliff Floyd. And those numbers for the season have gotten him thrown in the bullpen here and basically the 12th man on the rotation. Well, he doesn't I mean, have in the staff. He doesn't have a big breaking ball. He's mostly a fastball changeup pitcher. Glendon Rush, who was terrific for the Mets in the postseason in 2000. He's been the swing man for the Cubs the last three seasons. Cliff Floyd to pinch hit. Now, Cliff's never had a whole lot of luck as a pinch hitter. In 109 career at bats, he's hitting just 183 coming off the bench. And that makes sense to me. Cliff's a power guy. He's not a contact. You know, it's better for a contact hitter to be your pinch hitter. He lays off the fastball, 1-0. Oh. Boy, the Nafi Perez at second base is playing around five, six feet in the outfield grass. 
Slow ground ball. Cliff could beat that out. A basic could win it for New York. One and one. Now Cliff went after a bad one. Had his 1-0 hack right there. Probably looking for something in. Didn't get it. Now he has to go to hitting. David Wright with good speed at second, carrying the potential winning run. No score last of the night. Mets have had nine walk-off wins this year, looking to make it ten. To shortstop, and Cedeno will make the play to first, side retired. So Rush comes on to get Floyd to ground out, and we are heading to extra innings for the 13th time this year. Geico Sports Night, the news and information source for all New York area sports fans. Geico Sports Night covers the stories that New York sports fans care about. 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night, only on Sportsnet New York. Aaron Hammond takes over in the 10th inning in a scoreless game. And he's had a, a great start. He's been in and out of late. Now the ERA is balloon there up and over four now pitched last night for an inning give up a leadoff single in the eighth then retire the next three they'll face six seven and eight in the Chicago batting order John Mabry Angel Pagan and Ronnie Cedeno in the top of the tenth the Cubs are playing just their fifth extra inning game they're one and three the Mets are playing their 13th they're seven and five in extra inning games we know that well at 13. We've been here. I've been a lot of extra inning games this year. And you've been a trooper. I can bring the rain. I can bring the extra <laughs> innings. John Mabry happy to, happy to see John Maine out of the game. Struck out three times against Maine. And he takes the changeup ball one from Heilman. So after Maine went the first seven, Duaner Sanchez pitched a 1 2 3 eighth. Billy Wagner a 1 2 3 ninth. And now Heilman in the tenth. And the changeup fouled back. And I'm sure Willie would have stuck with Wagner for another inning. He only threw 11 pitches in the ninth if his turn had not come up, which I guess begs the question why he didn't double switch him into the game. Well, shoot, look at his bench right now. He's used Floyd. Now he used Floyd there. He would have had to use someone. He's still got three guys on his bench. You got Laduca, Marrero, and Woody. He would have had to take Delgado out in order to double switch. Right. That's probably why he didn't do it. You don't want to take your cleanup guy out fastball misses two and one to Mabry that's the pitch that Heilman needs to throw for a strike at inside fastball to left hand hitters not let it come tail out over the middle and he misses away with the fastball and now he's behind three and one first batters have been a problem lately for Heilman. Avery fouls one off right over for a look but it's well back in the crowd. That is not good and the on base percentage against Hallman for first batters is 400. That is so crucial for a relief pitcher's success getting that first batter out. Luke foul. Oh, for any pitcher, for that matter, even a starter, you've got to get that leadoff hitters. Very important to get that first out without a runner on base. Rick Peterson watched John Main turn in a second straight splendid outing, and the Mets needed that badly. Now the bullpen trying to keep it going. And Mabry wastes away another one. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat to Mabry. And fouls back the fastball. Good cut on that fastball and a good fastball by Heilman up in the strike zone. Outside, belt high, rising. Angel Pagan waiting on deck. 
Again, the 3 2. Ball four. And Hammond walks the leadoff hitter in the 10th inning. Fourth walk given up by Met pitching today. And I'm assuming here with Pagan, even though you've got Sedano in the on deck circle, do you bunt here? Do you hit and run? We'll see how Dusty Baker plays it. That's the problem for Dusty right now is that Sedano on deck has been awful. Mets look for the bunt right in at third. Pagan 0 for 2 in a walk today. And he is bunting and gets down a beauty. And Wright makes the play to Valentin. And Mabry to second base. So 5 4 on the sack. And Ronnie Sedano will get another crack at it. Well, just a beautiful bunt here. Look how he deadens it right down the third base line. Notice Heilman running to third to cover. And Castro, very good. Good fundies, that's what you work on. I know it's minor stuff, but I, I love that. I'm a stickler for that stuff. I love, fundies. I love to see it. Fundies. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. Fundies. That's like oppo. <laughs> well, here's Cedeno, 0 for 3 today, 0 for his last 17, hitting 130 over the last month. And trying to pick up the first run of the game. Mabry at second and one out. And he has not been a good hitter in the clutch. He has struggled big time with right. runners in scoring position. Ryan Dempster getting ready in the Cubs bullpen, hoping they can get him a lead. Near the bag, tough play for Wright, oh. and his feet come out from under him, and Cedeno has an infield hit. Wow. Now, it wasn't going to be an easy play for Wright anyway against Cedeno's speed, but once he lost his footing, he had no chance. Is the ground getting hard here, baking in the sun, or has he got his cleats, or you start slipping like that, you check your cleats and make sure they're not worn out. I mean, it doesn't look like I mean, what I see right there. His cleats look pretty good to me. A lot of guys wear plastic cleats these days. Does that make a difference? I never wore plastic cleats, so I couldn't tell you. I have to ask. There's David right there. They look good to me. And those are the plastic cleats. Reyes also wears those. So here's Nafi Perez up for the first time in the game. Came in in a double switch in the eighth. And Nafi takes the change up for a strike. So Howman's got his work cut out for him here. First and second, one out in a scoreless game. There is two for five in his career against Howman. Mabry, not much speed at second. Sedania runs well at first. Ooh. And Howman gets ahead of him, 0 2 with the changeup. He's completely fooled him here on a high change, way out in front. And Perez is a good off field hitter. I've always liked him as a player. Former Gold Glove winner in Colorado. Alman ahead of him 0-2. Missed with the fastball. You notice, you notice Castro got way up out of his crouch. He wanted a high fastball up in the strike zone. See if Perez would go fishing for it. Juan Pierre waits on deck. Each team with four hits in the game. We're in the 10th inning. Change up misses two and two. This is the last the two pitches ago. Castro wants the ball up. But I wanted it up a little higher and over the strike zone, the outside corner. See if he'd swing at it. 2-2 to Perez. Change up just missed. Well, do you send runners here? You got Mabry. It's a change up that just misses. You've got Mabry now, who's not a great runner, and you got Perez who knows how to handle the bat. Do you put it in motion? Well, if you do, with the left hand hitter up, Mabry's going to be a dead duck if Perez strikes out. You take yourself right out of the inning. It's can't second guess either way. Runners don't go, and it's popped up. David Wright shading his eyes. Infield fly rule invoked, and there are two out. And that was interesting. Kerwin Danley called infield fly rule, even though Wright had to battle the sun. Well, he was under it, 
And it is a high enough fly where David's under it. Even though he's bad on the sun, he's not in any distress. So that's the, that's the proper call. The assumption on the infield fly rule is that it's a ball that should be caught, a routine play. And that's to protect the runners. Because if there were no infield fly rule, you could let that ball drop and presumably get a double play. Correct. You would. You wouldn't get the runner hit the pop-up. You get the two runners on the base on force outs. That's why they only call the infield fly with first and second or bases loaded. So two out and two on, and here's Juan Pierre. Now remember, the pitcher's spot is on deck. Pierre, one for three and a walk. And the changeup misses somewhere. Just missed. I think it was. I thought it was away. Let's see Castro's glove. Just close. He brought it back a little bit. It's always a, a giveaway. Pierre has struggled with runners in scoring position this year. Just 208. And the changeup misses low. 2 and 0. So a dangerous spot for Heilman. You have Matt. Is that Matt Merton in the on deck circle? Yes, it is. The right hand hitter. See the approach here. Even though you really don't, and you really don't have an open base. The open base is third. Fastball misses, and now it's 3-0 to Pierre. Well, if he walks Pierre, then the bases would be full for Merton. Who started the first two games of this series in left field. It's been a struggle for Howman since he walked Mabry leading off the inning. First and second, two down. He throws a strike to Pierre. Three and one. Ryan Dempster staying busy. In the Cubs bullpen. It's either Ardsma or Howery out there. Probably Ardsma. Howery came in for the out the other day. Got the save. I believe that was Ardsma. Now Howman on three and one throws another strike. This one to the outside corner. So fastball in, fastball out. Now it's three and two. So mid surprise. It was a good pitch. But Pierre is one of those guys that as a that goes that way well. And that looked like the same pitch he called a ball. The first pitch. So now Mabry will have the advantage of getting himself in motion. Where a base hit could give the Cubs the lead. Three and two and two down. Three to the Pierre. And he was out in front. And managed to get the bat on the ball and foul it off. Well, this is a changeup that came inside. It was meant to be see the backhand by Castro. And that was that enabled Pierre to stay in the at bat. Pierre has gone 63 straight plate appearances without striking out. That's the longest current streak of the majors, and that's how you avoid striking out. That fans hoping that Heilman can get it done here in the top of the 10. Three and two to Pierre. The runners get set to go. Popped up. Valentine retreating with the sunglasses on. Side retired. Aaron Hobbin works around the leadoff walk. Top of the batting order coming up for the Mets in the bottom of the 10. The shortstop. Jose Lennon Lewis. Rush came on to get the final out in the bottom of the ninth. Stays on for the 10th against the top of the Mets batting order. Reyes, Chavez, and Beltran. Well, if ever there was an opportunity here for the Mets, They've got it set up top of the order. Reyes hitting from his strong side. Had a base hit his last time up. Thinks about a bunt, takes a strike. Mark Pryor started for the Cubs, left the game with a no hitter going after five and two thirds. Change up, hit to right center. Pierre shading his eyes, and he's got it, one away. Sun is starting to become more of a factor as this game moves along. Fielder, People down in those box seats, they're still in the they're still in baking in that sun. Big day for water and sunscreen. And the second deck there you see is kind of getting in the shade. 
Chavez 0 for 3 and a walk, and he takes ball one. Face the left hander Scott Ayer in the eighth inning and flight out to center. Another at bat against the lefty here, and he has the big cut. Looking for that game winning home run. And you don't want Andy doing that. Andy, just stay with your nice line drive stroke. You've got the three, four, and five hitters behind you. Getting a little big after hitting a home run last night. Tries to bunt and fouls it back. One and two to Chavez. Willie was talking yesterday about how Andy hit two home runs in the World Baseball Classic for Venezuela and came back to spring training looking to be a home run hitter and they had to convince him that's not what you're not what you are. And Andy's done a great job for the most part cutting down his swing especially with two strikes. Home runs have caused more slumps such a so seductive to hitters it's just you've got to stay disciplined if you're not a home run hitter. Breaking ball fouled away. So Chavez keeping the at bat alive just trying to get on base here with the big boys Beltron and Delgado to follow no score last of the 10th. Fouls off the fastball. Let's check in with Chris Cotter Chris. Hey Gary just to follow up on that conversation that that we all had with Willie about Andy Chavez says he wants him to swing more like his former teammate Mickey Rivers a little short compact swing and go the other way every now and then. Loops that one down the left field line foul. And that's, of course, Mickey Rivers who played with Willie. Those 70 Yankee teams. And he does have a similar swing to Mickey Rivers. He might want him to swing like Mickey, but he could never walk like Mickey. No. Mickey Rivers had one of the most distinctive gates of any big leaguer I've ever seen. Looked like he was just moping along till it was time to run. And then, boy, could he run. One two to Chavez and he lays off the breaking ball two and two. Wasn't it Mickey Rivers when he. Made a tough catch or misjudged a fly ball said the wind was blowing 80 degrees. <laughs> I'm sure it was a Freudian slip. Now <laughs> the way and this is becoming some at bat for Andy Chavez who's already seen nine pitches. That's like oil can boys saying after giving up a home run in Cleveland. Saying, well, that's what happens when you build a ballpark next to the ocean. <laughs> Fouled away. Well, that's 10 pitches now from Rush to Chavez, and he's still in there. Well, Andy stays in on left handers, and, you know, Willie's leaving him in. He's left him in this game. He's just, what, a second at bat off a of lefty? This will be the 11th pitch of the at bat. Slapped to third. Big hop for Ramirez at the bag. And he got him two down. Ball came up nicely for Aramis Ramirez, making that play a little bit easier. Two out. So Beltron bats with two out and nobody on. Carlos has been on base three times in a row now with two walks and a broken bat single. He's stolen two bases today after not stealing one for a month and a half. And he takes ball one. So don't try and feel a little frisky today. He's done well against Rush in the past. Four hits in eight at bats. Carlos Delgado on deck. Three and oh. And Rush pitching as though he wouldn't mind all that much if he walked Beltron. Well, pick your poison. Delgado's no slouch, even though he struggled off lefties. You make a mistake, this ball game could be over. That was Beltron in a running mode today. There's a line drive base hit, and Beltron's on for the fourth straight time. So a two out single for Beltron, and we'll see whether he's inclined to try and swipe another one as Delgado comes up. Delgado's had a rough day at the plate, 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. And after driving in 10 runs in a five game span, he's gone hitless the last two days. And you're going to see that same defensive alignment as his last at bat when he struck out with runners on second and third. They're even playing a more shift 
off of Rush with the shortstop up the middle. Delgado two for ten against Rush with a home run. And he takes ball one. Well, David Wright, if, if Carlos walks here or gets on with a hit, David Wright is going to face Ardsma or Dempster. I'd be less inclined to bring in Dempster. I would think that Dusty is saving Dempster for the possibility of getting a lead. Yes. Right now, nobody's throwing. He had Ardsma off earlier, so he may intend to finish this inning with Rush come what may. Of course, Rush has been better against right hand hitters than left hand hitters at least this season. Well trod back easily and that pretty much has been the case throughout Glendon's career because he just doesn't have a great breaking ball. He's a very useful pitcher who will take the ball in any situation. Mark Pryor hurt himself during batting practice right before the all star break strained an oblique muscle and Rush took over for him and pitched five innings for a win and was right back in the bullpen again. Well you notice the left handers have been throwing Carlos Delgado pre predominantly 99 95 percent away. There's a catcher setting up away again. Goes the other way right over the bag and into left field. Beltran will get to third. Tracked down by Ramirez and the runners are at second and third. Well that's a rarely seen part of the ballpark for Carlos Delgado right over the third base bag for a double. Well the catcher set up away watch the glove it was inside and it jammed him and he inside out it look at him inside out and that's just good hitting. That is good hitting and that had a chance to score Beltron and it was hit a little bit harder down that line. Well I would think the Cubs have got to walk David right here and pitch to Valentin. First base open. Yes. Valentin would be coming up right handed not his better side. Larry Rothschild talking to Rush and you don't worry with Rush because he's got good control about loading the bases. Well you've got David Wright who's on top of the with, with the leaders in, in batting average against left handers and that's been David's M.O. since he got called up. So if they did anything but walk David in this spot it would be shocking. Yeah, yep. That's exactly what they'll do. So David will walk for the third time today. And that'll load him up for Valentin. will take another crack at winning it in their final at bat. Rush retired the first two here in the 10th but Beltron a hard hit single. Delgado an inside out double. The intentional walk to right and now they're loaded for Valentin. That's have left nine runners on base today. They're in need of one more hit and Valentin hitting 277 coming into this game with 47 at bats against the lefties. He's three for eight in his career against Glenn and Rush. Beltron the only guy that matters. He's a third with two down. Strike one. Valentin thought it might have been high. Well it's that borderline strike. It used to be a strike all the time. It was at the letters. And then it used to never be a strike. <laughs> You're absolutely right. One and one to Valentin. That's tied with the Brewers for the most walk off wins in the majors. They're looking to make it 10 today. You have an on deck hitter here only because the rules say you have to. He can never come up in this inning. Base is loaded two out. Yeah, we're going to go out there and talk to him. That's the second time he stepped off. 
Let's get our signs straight here. Well, it's a one and one count to Valentin. I want you to get up now. <laughs> I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out. Peter of Finch is exhorting the crowd. <laughs> That's one of his great performances. From what a net from network. One and one to Valentin. Came with a fastball and Valentin swung through it. Now it's one and two. Watch the catcher wants it in, watch where it is. Oh, right down the middle. Jose missed it. And now Valentin behind in the count. London Rush trying to work his way out of trouble in the tenth. Line drive piece hit and the Mets win it. Valentin delivers the game winner on the bottom of the tenth as Beltran comes home. Wins for the New York Mets and they avoid the sweep. Valentin getting pounded by his teammates after his game winning hit. John Main with seven shutout innings and the Mets make it count. Valentin pummeled and the Mets finish off the series with the Cubs with a walk off win. Well, a big clutch hit for Valentin here. Batting on his weaker side, his right side. A one-two fastball right down the middle and up. And look at that beautiful level swing in the, his fist. This is a big win, Gary, for the Mets here to start off their road trip. Three in Atlanta and three in Florida back in division. Well, after the pitching struggled in the last three games, the pitching was magnificent today. John Main and three relievers combining on a four-hit shutout over 10 innings, and the Mets pull it out on the bottom of the 10th on Valentin's hit. Chris Cotter is standing by downstairs with the hero. All right, thanks, Gary. Jose, you guys were no hit into the sixth inning. I mean, did you ever think you were going to be able to get to these pitchers today? Well, I mean, that's something that uh, is sometimes that's how baseball goes, you know. It was a war game played by both teams, you know, great pitching today. Uh, Pryor was, you know, he was one of the greatest uh, pitchers, you know, I mean, I see before him. But uh, today he was in some spot, you know, he was getting some pitches when he needed, and uh, that's, that's how it takes, you know. It's, it's not throwing hard. He throws strikes and make the pitch when he needs. Same thing today with uh, with Johnny May. You know, Johnny May was standing today. You know, the, you know, it's something that uh, neither neither team wants to score some runs. So we got into the 10 innings. You know, we put some pressure on it. Got to stride all that. I want to just put the ball in play, make something happen, and I get a base hit up the middle. Jose, the at bat before you failed to get a bunt down. Did that give you added motivation coming up there? Were you looking for maybe a chance at retribution? Well, I mean, yeah, something they definitely, especially when you uh, got a situation with base loaded and two out. You know, with base that you win. So. So um, you got to go. You got to. You got to. You got to think it in the past. I mean, you can't think it in the past. You got to let that thing go away from you, and uh, and you know, make sure that you go out there and get a good at bat like that, like I did in the last one. You avoided a sweep. How big was it to at least get this one win before heading back out on the road for a big three-game series in Atlanta? Definitely. I mean, that's the win that you want to get. You know, so, uh, especially when you don't want to get swept at home. You know, I think it's the first time in uh, in the whole year that we get uh, swept at home. So, uh, but like I said, you know, it was a good one play today. Um, you know, we take it, and then we take it. So, um, you know, sometimes you'll be able to have, uh, win some games like that. You know, one game, one run game. So, um, but like I said, we want to make it easy. But uh, that's how baseball goes sometimes. But tomorrow's an ace uh, day off, you know. We just got to refresh tomorrow and get ready for Atlanta. All right, thanks, Jose. You're welcome. All right, Gary. Well, the Mets have been wonderful in one-run games this year. They're now 22-10 and 10 in games decided by one run. They get their eighth extra inning win and their tenth walk-off win as they beat the Cubs in 10, 1 to nothing. Be sure to join us for our next broadcast Friday at 7.30 on the WB11 as the Mets head to Atlanta to take on the Braves. Coming up next, it's Nissan Post Game Live. Quite a battle this afternoon here at Shea on a hot afternoon. Pedro Martinez getting set for a start on Friday, but it was John Main again front and center against Mark Pryor. Pryor had a no-hitter for five and two-thirds before he left. Main was magnificent for seven, and it went all the way into the tenth before Jose Valentin came up with the game-winning hit, and the Mets pulled it out on the bottom of the tenth. Now for Keith Hernandez, Chris Connor, and our entire SNY crew, I'm Gary Cohen. Let's go to Gary Apple in our Sportsnet New York studio.
right, Gary, we thank you so much. Coverage of the Mets continues here on SNY with Nissan Post Game Live. Ryan Darling and I are going to break down today's game between the Mets and the Cubs. Also, plenty of reaction from the clubhouse, including the manager, Willie Randolph. Then Daily News Live coming your way at 5 right here on SNY. But first, it's Nissan Post Game Live with Ron Darling coming up right after this. It was dramatic at Shea Stadium as the Mets get the win in the 10th inning as we welcome you inside our Nissan Post Game Live studios. Gary Apple sitting alongside Ron Darling. The Mets get the win 1-0 and they break that three-game losing streak. I, I know they do have a, a sizable lead, Ronnie. Uh, 12 games now over the Braves. How important is it, though, to avoid the sweep and get the win? Well, you always want to avoid the sweep, but it's not that they were losing three straight. It's the way they were losing those games, and that's without good starting pitching. That was changed today with John Main. What an effort for seven innings. All right, talking about John Main. Let's get into the highlights here and take a look at Mr. Maine, who was coming off that complete game shutout of the Astros. And there is a good look at the 25-year-old who came over in the trade for Chris Benson at a terrific throw by Ramon Castro. And, and just so quick getting rid of the baseball. Castro every day works on his throwing, trying to throw out the base runners. Great throw there. John Maine getting Jock Jones to ground right back to him here. And so gets out of the inning in the same inning still scoreless prior lays down a beautiful bunt David Wright makes the barehanded play and, and gets the out this was terrific defense well as a pitcher if you're going to have a good effort out there it takes all your friends to help you and you need some help in the defensive line and that's what David Wright did here bottom third Jose Reyes and Reyes needs to get going offensively there's no question about that and, and on the bases as we get a look at Mark Pryor right here, they need him to create things. Michael Barrett, one of the best catchers in the National League at throwing out runners, couldn't get Reyes there. Pryor does get Andy Chavez to end the inning in the fourth. Todd Walker lining a shot to left center, and look at Beltran. Boy, no one covers the gaps as well as Carlos Beltran. Just so much speed, and he picks a spot to get to and makes a fine catch. Bottom four, after giving up a walk to Beltran, Pryor would get the next three. That's Delgado popping out to Barrett, the catch catcher and that it's David Wright sending one out into right field. You got the feeling that, that Pryor felt, felt pretty good out there. Usually you see him throw 94, 95 miles an hour. His velocity's down, but he had great control. Jose Valentin then grounding out, and that was it for the Mets. Bottom six, Juan Pierre leading off and just sort of a swinging bunt. Now, Valentin almost makes a great play, but Delgado cannot pick it up. Well, Valentin has surprised us all year long with his great defensive play. Short hops it to Delgado, but because of the closeness of the hard play for Carlos. Todd Walker then draws the walk, and Willie Randolph coming out not to change pitchers, though. Very unusual. Usually the Rick Peterson comes out, but Willie wanted to go out to talk to his young pitcher, and he responded. Whatever he said worked facing Aramis Ramirez and, and a pretty good performance right there by Maine. Three pitches to get the hottest hitter out for the Cubs and then got Jock Jones on this little ground out to get out of the inning. And so inning over we head to the bottom of the sixth. Pryor still had not given up and Carlos Beltran walks right here and that would be it for Mark Pryor. He leaves the game with the no hitter intact. You know I said before he had good control. He didn't. He had five walks but he had good command when he needed it. Five and two thirds for Maine after Beltran stole. Will Ullman got Delgado to ground out to second. He got out of the inning so the no hitter was still in progress. Top seven and Maine still in there and still firing. Well the thing that amazes everyone he is very aggressive with his fastball and it has great life when it gets to the strike zone. Hitter swing right through it bottom seven Jose Valentin facing Roberto Navoa he pops up into shallow center but it falls in there and finally that that no hitter was over yeah and it's probably the center fielders ball Juan Pierre but miscommunication between Pierre and Cedeno Ramon Castro had a chance but he couldn't deliver he sends one deep to center but that was the end of the inning and so we were heading to the eighth it was still scoreless bottom eight Reyes at first Beltron into center put runners at the corners and it gave Carlos Delgado a, a great chance to give the Mets the lead yes after Beltron stole second Delgado with a chance to knock in a couple does not come up with it. Nice pitching there by Will Oman. Top of the ninth, Billy Wagner in relief facing Ramirez and getting him to pop out to center. What, what was your take on, 
on Wagner as we watch the, the ninth inning. Wagner threw a lot of sliders. That's unusual for him, but he's been working that into his repertoire and got through the inning unscathed. Got Jacques Jones to ground out, and then Michael Barrett going down, swinging. And so bottom nine, Mets runners at first and second. Cliff Floyd off the bench, but but not a pinch hitter, Ron. It, it has not done well as a pinch hitter over the years. It's hard to do. Everyone thinks going up there cold and getting a hit is an easy thing to do. Julio Franco is one of the few who does it well. And so we went to extra innings. We pick it up in the 10th inning now. Aaron Heilman in relief. Run around second. Roddy Cedeno to right, but he slips and he falls. Those, those rubber cleats they were talking about during the game. A lot of the players don't use the steel spikes now, and that cost them right there. But Heilman does get out of the, the jam. Juan Pierre pops out. Valentin handles it. And so bottom of the 10th, Delgado. And how often do you see that? Well, this is a cue shot. This will show up as an opposite field hit, but really just a cue shot to left field. So a chance now for Jose Valentin with runners at second and third. And that, my friends, is your game winner. He had thrown a pitch prior to that up and in that Valentin swung through. He made the adjustment and got the winning hit. Carlos Beltran came in with the winning run. And look at the celebration. I mean, Valentin right in the middle of it, feeling the emotion as the Mets get the win by a final of one nothing. They squeaked out seven hits, and again, Pryor pitched very well. He's been on the DL twice this year, but uh, left the game. He was at a very strict uh, pitch count, I think 103 pitches for him. Well, coming off that oblique muscle, so they were trying to keep his pitch count down, but I think Pryor looked fantastic out there. He walked five, so his control was a little bit spotty, but he pitched a nice game, but uh, Maine was the story for the Mets. After struggling with some of their starters, not going deep into the game, Maine was the difference for the Mets. All right, so Maine giving up three hits in the game in those seven innings, and then the bullpen, terrific. Sanchez, Wagner, and Heilman, three innings combined to give up just one hit as the Mets get the win in dramatic fashion. Out at Shea, one nothing in 10 innings. Still ahead here on Nissan Post Game Live, Ron and I continue to break down this afternoon's ball game. We'll send it back out to Shea Stadium. Analysis from Keith Hernandez, and then a little bit later on, Willie Randolph's deadly session with the media. It's ahead here on Nissan Post Game Game live. Mr. Darling and I back from the heart of Manhattan in just a moment. Mets post game live is brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealers. Welcome back to Nissan Post Game Live. Gary Apple sitting alongside Ron Darling. Let's get back out to Shea Stadium. Keith Hernandez is joining us. And, and Keith, a terrific win for the Mets as they break this three-game losing streak. They, they get the run in the 10th inning after, after two were out. Take us through that 10th inning and what you saw. Well, uh, basically, it's a two-out rally, and those are the best kind. So it started with Beltron with that broken bat, uh, a broken bat single to right center field. Uh, the left-handers were able to keep the runners tight, even though Carlos stole two bases today. wasn't able to steal off Rush. Delgado, I thought, had a great at-bat. That was an inside corner fastball, and they, he inside-outed it and went the opposite field. He's such a pull hitter. Normally, you guard the lines there, and that, that's a double play. The inning's over. But with Delgado, a pull hitter, the, the line was open, and he just inside-outed it, and they walked right, of course, which was the right move intentionally and it set it up for Jose Valentin and what more can you say about him he's been fantastic you know Keith uh, John Maine won't factor in the decision but what a ball game mm. he pitched and especially when they needed it well I tell you it's the third time I've seen him pitch Ron and uh, he's not afraid to throw his fastball and he's got a good changeup, a good sinking changeup. he's got a good slow almost like a 12 to 6 curve he drops on the outside corner and he throws a slider to the right hand hitters um, I, I mean, he's made a statement today. I mean, what's he got now? Nine innings, 16 innings in a row, scoreless. This is the right now. They're going through six-man rotation. Del Duque is going to pitch. Um, they're all going to get another chance here for that four and five starter. Uh, Pelfrey's going to pitch Tuesday. I mean, Maine to me, he's, he's going on the road trip. He's staying. Keith, what's your take on, on Mark Pryor? Did go five and two-thirds of no-hit ball, but he walked five through over 100 pitches. I know he's trying to come back from the the injuries. What, what, what's your take on on Pryor? Well, I think they're very careful with him. Uh, I almost think that Dusty wished that he gave up a hit. So, you know, it's tough to take a pitcher out when he's got a no-no. Uh, he went five and two-thirds, didn't give up a run. Five walks is very uncharacteristic for him in his short career. He's not a guy that walks people. So, you know, so he has that oblique pull in his stomach that he came back from. 
You know, pitchers use those uh, those core muscles, and I think they were just playing it safe with him. Uh, but you know, he's got a lot of heart. He pitched out of a lot, so, uh, out of a few jams. You know, Keith, uh, Billy Wagner celebrated his birthday yesterday, and he looked great out there today through his inning. Do you think the, the more work that he's getting is going to help Wagner down the stretch? Well, Ron, that's a good point. He said he's he said in the paper into Willie that he wants more work. Well, he got another inning of work today, One, two, uh, two days in a row. And he's got a good slider, Ron, and you, we've talked about it. And, you know, you just can't pitch every third day and be, when you've been a power pitcher, primarily a one-pitch pitcher your whole career, and all of a sudden you're, you're getting a little on the, on the back side of your prime and trying to mix in a slider. It's a new pitch. You know, he needs to work and hone it. And today he threw it for strikes. He was just really sharp. And so, Keith, it's off to Atlanta now for the Mets to begin a three-game series with the Braves on, on Friday. And Pedro is back. What are you expecting from uh, Martinez on Friday? Mike, I, you know, I, I don't know, Gary, what to expect. Uh, if He says he's healthy. Um, that hip has been a problem for him. It's the hip this time, not the toe. So he's had a little time off. He's had time to throw down the side. Um, but we'll see how sharp he is when that kind of a layoff. I think Ronnie could probably have a better comment on that because that's something that, that that's his field of expertise. But it's certainly a big boost for this club to get their ace back. All right, Keith, thank you so much. Keith Hernandez from out at Shea Stadium as the Mets now head to Atlanta to begin a three-game series, as I mentioned, on, on Friday. So chime in on that, Ron, because, yeah. because you, you've been in this situation coming back from injury. What are you expecting from Pedro? You know, I haven't. I've never really ever came back from injury, never on the disabled list. Wow, but I do your know whole career, never my came entire back? career. So, but I do know with Pedro is that these little breaks that he gets occasionally because of the injury, he works really hard, and he'll be ready on Friday night, and he's not the kind of pitcher who's going to be wild. He throws strikes coming out of Bed, he could throw strikes. So he'll have uh, his full arsenal on Friday night. All right, on that note, let us head for break here on Daily News Live. Uh, Daily News Live. Nissan <laughs> Post Game Live. You see, I'm thinking about that's that nice. 5 o'clock hour that's coming up uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, when we come back, we're going to hear from the manager of the Mets. That is Willie Randolph. And we are back here in just a moment. Welcome back to Nissan Post Game Live. More on the Mets and the Cubs and this afternoon's game with Ron Darling in just a bit. But first, a look at what's coming your way on Daily News Live at 5 o'clock. Soprano star and avid Yankee fan Joe Gattascoli is going to join us to discuss, amongst other things, the Bombers in their 2006 season. Giants and Jets camps getting underway. We'll have plenty of discussion on Gang Green and Big Blue, Chad and Eli, and much more. And figure skater Sarah Hughes, the gold medalist here in studio, to discuss, amongst other things, her success at the Olympics in 2002 in Salt Lake City. She is also a very big Mets fan, and we will he uh, hear from her on that. It all comes your way on Daily News Live at 5 with, of course, uh, yours truly right here on SNY. So the Mets getting the win out of Chase Stadium. one nothing is the final as we welcome Ron Darling back in here. Let, let's begin by talking about John Main. We, we weren't sure what we were going to get after the shutout against Houston and what we got were seven really strong innings. Yeah, he really has showed a penchant for being very aggressive and I think that's what you love to see in a young pitcher. He's tr he goes out there, he challenges hitters with his fastball, he throws strikes, he feels his position well, gets a a lot of ground balls and what we started to see now is him mixing in his slider a big 12 to 6 curveball a pretty good changeup that he uses when he gets behind in the count especially left handers two and one or three and one so Maine is a lot more polished than originally thought remember he came up through the Baltimore Orioles organization and he had the pitch against that tough AL East every night when he was brought up against the Yankees, against the Blue Jays, against the Red Sox, so he's more seasoned than we thought. Mark Pryor came in at 0-4, battling the injuries in ERA over 8, but he looked uh, uh, many times, Ronnie, like, like the old Mark Pryor, one who was not afraid to go out there, challenge hitters, although he did walk five. You know, he did. His velocity was down a little bit, and he did walk five, like you said, Gary, so that's something that he usually doesn't do. His breaking pitch was a little spotty. That changeup was his best changeup all day. Day, but Mark Pryor, you take him in a heartbeat any time. His problem has never been that he is not good enough to really dominate hitters. His problem has been getting on the field. Our play of the game today, I don't think there's any question about that. It is Jose Valentin in the 10th inning. It's brought to you by Nissan and 
Man, this guy has been so valuable all season long. You know, and that is not his strong side from the right side. Got a pitch up from Glendon Rush, and just he seems to be magical this year. Last year was hurt, had one of those years that you'd rather forget, and I think he's really making his mark, maybe with no more Garcia Parra as the comeback player of the year. All right, we see what's going on in that scrum right there after he scored. Our guys goofing around, kicking him, carrying him. What, what's that like? What's that excitement like after a win like that? Yeah, don't kick a man when he's down or out. I think uh, that excitement, to tell you the truth, is just one of those things that happens and there's you know if they could ever put that in a pill everyone would take it it's just a, a great feeling and I think Valentin just a culmination of when I first saw him play as a younger player I knew he was a great offensive player but he's an all-around good player great offense great defense at second base came up as a shortstop second base really wasn't his position he's just found a home here with the Mets by the way that game-winning hit came off the x Met. Glendon Rush as we head for break here on Nissan Post Game Live. We'll still uh, hear from the manager, Willie Randolph, and have much more from out of Chase Stadium when Ron and I come back here from the heart of Manhattan in a moment. In the first two games. So Welcome again, back to Nissan Patriots. Post Game Live as we get a look at other action around the big leagues, Tigers and the Indians. Bottom first, Justin Verlander. Getting the strikeout bottom four. Verlander getting Ben Broussard swinging to end the inning. He would finish the day with eight strikeouts bottom five. Two on, one out. Vasquez the grounder. Verlander starting the double play. Guillen turns it. That would end the inning. Top six. Still no score. Two men on. Maglio Ordonez delivers into left field. And that is off the wall. Thames comes in. Monroe comes in. The Tigers. Ronnie, how about this? They continue to play good baseball. They get the win. Four to one is the final. Twins. And the White Sox, Michael Kadire, the home run off Mark Burtley. It was 2-0 Twins early on. Then in the third, still 2-0, runners at the corners. It's Justin Morneau signaling into left field, scoring Luis Castillo. It was 3-0 Minnesota. And then bottom four, 3-2 Twins, Joe Creedy. Just reaches out and sends it through the middle. A.J. Brzezinski comes in from second. It tied the game at three. And right now they are in the seventh inning and the Twins in control seven to three. And what a job they have done in Minnesota as we get a look at the standings in the American League Central division. The Tigers up by eight over the White Sox. But look at the Twins coming hard in the wild card chase. What a job. 17 over 500. The Twins who just won an incredible run. Former Met shortstop Ron Gardenhire really has those Twins playing great baseball. All right. Let us uh, go back out to Shea Stadium. Willie Randolph. Uh, out there, let's listen into the Mets manager right now. Oh, I love those off days. When I'm going off day, I'm going nice. Makes it go a lot nicer with Atlanta. What do you guys got? Well, well, talk about the fact that two starting pitches struggle and then John May picks him up. Well, he needs to uh, solidify a spot, you know. It's always nice when you go out and throw a game like that. He's what, 17 scoreless innings for him right now. He's a nice little rhythm, a nice groove, and uh, we need to continue to do that. What did you say to him in the sixth inning? Because after that, he struck out four of the next six batters. Well, I was challenging my guys all the time. I just got in his face and, you know, challenged him to uh, finish up strong, you know. And I uh, told him he showed me something. I went out to the mound earlier and uh, gave him a little, little kick, and uh, he responded well. So I told him I appreciated, you know, the, the respond to the challenge, and uh, he did just that. Do you appreciate a game like this, both teams pitching the way that they did? Obviously, you would have liked to have scored some, some runs early in the game, but when you see the pitchers pitching like they were. Well, it's always nice. Uh, pitchers duel is always nice to see. And, uh, you know, when you're on the field, it's a little more nerve-wracking than in the stands. But, uh, you know, we're just hung in there tough. And, you know, as long as we end up with the best results, that's the most important thing. But uh, pitchers duel is always fun to watch. Willie, how about the uh, importance of that game and that win as you guys head to Atlanta? Well, it's just important just to get a win. I mean, when you lose three in a row, it's not the end of the world, but you like to stop the bleeding anytime you can. Uh, I don't think there's any significance going to Atlanta. I mean, obviously, when we go up there, we want to play well and, and, and beat them up a little bit. So uh, even if we lost today, we still went up there with the same attitude. So it's just nice to, to get a win for, for the off day and, and go up to Atlanta and uh, from there go to, go, to, go to Florida. What are you looking for out of Pedro? Oh, well, we will wait and see. I mean, he's always pretty, pretty solid. So I'm, I'm always looking positively on his outings, and he always pitches well. So um, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Every time he takes the ball, I look for a positive thing. He's one of the best. Willie Valentin's kind of so big in this year. Can you talk about? I know you said I talk about him a lot, but his contract. Yeah, I talk about him all the time. I mean, he's, he's done a great job for us. He's been 
probably the MVP in a lot of ways. We've got a lot of guys on the team that have, that have done that for us, getting big hits for us, but um, had a lot of confidence in him at, at the end there. And, uh, you know, he's uh, one of those veteran guys that you can count on. He loves to compete. And uh, you know, the pressure's on him. He always responds to it. So another big hit for him. Big knock. Because he has responded all year long, did it make you feel that much better that because he failed to get the bunt down the time before that he was able to get the game winning? Well, I had a feeling that he would redeem himself. I mean, you know, he, he felt bad about not getting the bunt down. He's a, he's a total professional, and uh, and he competes. That's the bottom line. You know, those kind of guys, uh, they, they don't uh, scare in those situations. They feel like they can you know, get back into the game, uh, helps get back into the game, and that's what he did. So you trust your people, and, and you got to know who, you know who you're dealing with. And uh, he's a guy that I've watched play for a lot of years, and I've seen a lot of big hits. So uh, early in the season when he was struggling, I didn't lose confidence in him. When a lot of people calling for his head, uh, he's a, a solid professional. And, and again, this is what he does. So got to keep him going like everyone else. Keep him going and um, making a contribution. He did it again today. Great job. Specifically, what was Again, he just moves his fastball around. Uh, you know, he got a good, good late movement on his fastball. He spotted it in and out. Mixed in his secondary pitches real well. And uh, just uh, made pitches when he had to make them. I mean, he's very deceptive in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, he's, he got behind at times, but when he had to make a pitch late in the count, he was able to do that. Well, then when you said you went out to, uh, to challenge him, that was before the Ramirez? It was the only time I went out to the mound. What, that's what it was. Were there things that you weren't seeing in that inning that made you say, hey, I got to use nope. that's, that's unusual I, for you to run. No, I always like to uh, challenge my players any way I can. And, uh, you know, when you start to learn a little bit about it, your, your people, you know, you want to see if they respond to some of your challenges. So, you know. I'll, I'll do more of that every once in a while. If I feel the need to do that, uh, usually I do it with younger pitchers, guys that are veterans who have been around. They know pretty much how to handle themselves. So just wanted to um, let them know I was rooting for him, and uh, I, I kind of believed in the fact that he would uh, bear down and get through the inning, and he did. Well, earlier in the week you said about Dean and Pelfrey and that you kind of want them to make any decisions difficult for you. Is this a perfect example of that? We'll see how happens in the next start. And anytime you pitch well, it's always good. You move forward and uh, hope that the next time around, you're just as consistent. So more than anything, you want to see consistency. Just one one win here and there is not going to keep in the rotation. But uh, when you pitch well, you get the ball again. So that's what's going to happen with him. So, Hopefully, so, continue to progress. So, so you expect John to get started next week in Florida? We'll see. We'll see. Let's just want to get John's over there. Do you know when you're going to start Pelsey uh, we'll see. Nope. No, nope. we've got to point to Sunday. And we'll see what happens after that. Okay, thanks, so, so, so even though Maine has had these two good games in a row, your rotation is still a little bit muddled at the moment. Well, it's not it's not that. It? It's just that there's no need to uh, to to announce you know, what the rotation is going to be yet. We have time to do that. We have six starters right now, and we'll see how things work out as we move along. You guys will know soon enough uh, what the rotation is. All right, thanks, okay. Willie. John. And so that is the Mets manager, Willie Randolph. A, a couple of interesting things. When he came out, he said, man, nice to get a win with the off day coming yes. before you go to Atlanta. And he also talked about coming out and challenging Ronnie John Main. Well, I think what he's trying to do with the young pitcher is he knows that down the road, he's got to make a decision on who is going to be there and who's not going to be there as far as on your pitching staff. And to go out and challenge a young guy and see how he responds. And John Main, I think, passed the test today yeah. as he uh, just pitched wonderfully over the seven innings. But John, it was John Main's story. Willie Randolph went out and challenged him and he saw what the result is and I think that even though Willie did not say that he'll get another start um, I know that he'll probably get another I'm start. confident <laughs> I am confident in yes. your in your call on this Ron by the way Aaron Heilman got the win uh, in that one inning of relief in the 10th inning but it was John Main in many ways who was the story for the Mets on the mound seven innings seven strikeouts three hits 118 pitches and we heard from John just a short time ago John, why is it all falling into place? Is it mechanics? Is it confidence? What is it? It's a little bit of both. You know, Rick Pearson has, has uh, helped me a lot. And, uh, you know, just trying to, you know, work on things. And it's a work in progress still. Willie said when he came out to talk to you, he challenged you. He did. He came out and said, this is your ball game. You know, get this guy. Go after him. Be aggressive. Because it's kind of, you know, I'd be as aggressive as I was earlier in the game. And he, he just said, be aggressive. It's your game. You got to feel really good uh, putting in uh, another fantastic start here. Yeah, I mean, you know, just <laughs> I I just want to go out there and pitch well, and uh, I just you know got lucky, some good plays behind me, and uh, things have been going my way. 
you know, you can only control what you can control, but you know, the way you were pitching there for you know five or six innings, giving up just two or three hits, and you look up and you, your team has no hits and no runs, was it kind of kind of frustrating to not have the lead the way you were pitching? No, you can't do that. Um, Prior pitched a great game, and it's the way it happens sometimes. And you just got to go out there and play for one run, and you know that's what we did. John, obviously there's some decisions that have to be made. Do you look at this as, you know, every game out there, just pitch as low as you can and get another chance? That's all it is. Just go out there, pitch as low as you can. Pitch my chance. I didn't know that. Quiet, quiet, please. Just starting rotation, just go out and pitch well. John, is it like a, is it, is it serve as motivation to you when you're going against a guy who's pitching a no hitter in this case, but it's prior, he's pitching really well? Do you think about that in the other half inning? I don't think about it too much because, uh, he, you know, he's got to work on. He, he's got his game. I got my game, and I go, I go out there and just try to limit their runs, and we just, just you know, just go out there and both pitch our own get different game, it's every game. John, your team is out there looking for pitching on the trade market. Do you think that the way you pitch, the team should stop looking? Well. Not every team needs pitching, but uh, you know, I just hope you know I can pitch here and uh, I want to stay here. And who knows what's going to happen? We're just going to have to wait till uh, Monday to find out. Obviously, you have the stuff to challenge big time hitters. You know, in the middle of the lineup today is—is is that something that you had to grow into? Like, you know, wanting not wanting so much, but, but challenging the challenging the hitters on two strikes. Yeah, it's more of a, you know more of a confidence thing. You know, before I felt that uh, I had to make the perfect pitch to get people out, and you know that's not necessarily always the case. And it's just been working out um, great for me so far. But you've been feeling strong in these late. You've gone deep these last two times. You've been feeling strong in the. I've been feeling better than I started out. You know, I'm getting used to it, and uh, you know, getting a little better shape. That's it. John, does it make it any more any more difficult the fact that you don't exactly know when your next start will be, or do you? No, because you know you still pre you still uh, prepare the same way, and uh, you know I still got to go out and do my workouts, my few bullpens, and you know just the way it goes. And so there is the 25-year-old Mets pitcher, John Main. Ron Darling, what did you see? Well, I like listening to him in his press conference. Very humble, of course, and, and I think that's the way you have to be. Uh, John Main, what I saw today, is a guy who can throw strikes with all of his pitches. That's what you have to do, and I think he's a very impressionable kid, which I think is good when you're around guys like Tom Glavin and Pedro Martinez. And he did show guts today. When, when Willie came out there and challenged him, he got the job done, and again, seven strong innings for John Main. Now, coming up on Friday, it is the Mets and the Braves from down in Atlanta, and it is the return of Pedro Martinez, who hasn't pitched since back on June the 28th in Boston. Does he have to make sure that he's not too hyped up for the start? Well, I think that he's such a veteran that, you know, he's going to be hyped up for the start, but he's always been able to control his emotions. Horacio Ramirez for the Braves has thrown very well this year, 5-3 and three after coming back from an injury, but... Martinez is a great shot, shot in the arm for the Mets, and it's a great thing to have him back. And maybe now they can kind of get on a roll with their starting pitching. And so the Mets get the win by a final of 1-0 at the moment. And again, the Braves are in action tonight, but at the moment they lead the division by 12 full games. And so that is going to do it for us here on Nissan Post Game Live. Don't forget Deadly News uh, Live coming your way here on Sportsnet New York at uh, 5 o'clock. Much more reaction from the Mets clubhouse on Geico Sportsnet at 6. And Right now, we're going to join the 2006 New York City Triathlon already in progress. Great to be with you, Ron. Thanks, Gary. For Ron Darling, I'm Gary Apple. Thanks for joining us here on Nissan Post Game Live as the Mets get the win. One nothing.